Welcome to the fantasy audiobook. Harry Potter. I didn't expect the Dark Lord to become my best friend. Chapter 81. Is Thinking. Discussions once again envelop the corridor. Professor McGonagall squeezed into the crowd. Her expression was very ugly, and the corners of her mouth were pursed tightly into a straight line. Oh Potter, you nuisance, look at the good things you did, Peeves danced and sang, you kill the students, and you still think it's funny. Shut up, Peeves. Professor McGonagall's voice was cold and full of anger. She evacuated the students with the professors around her with a cold face, and arranged for the professors to take the students back to the lounge, but she didn't let Serples and Harry go. Follow me, Potter, she said. Professor, I swear I didn't, Potter said anxiously. I have no control over this matter, Potter, Professor McGonagall replied briefly, stopping Harry's next words, and then she called to Serples who was about to leave with Draco and the others, stop a moment. Mr. Grindelwald. Serpolis turned back, a little confused, Professor. Let's go together, Professor McGonagall's face remained serious, Dumbledore might want to see you. I don't think this has anything to do with Sepples, Professor, he was with us the whole time. Draco stopped in front of Sepples, what's the need to take Sepples away? I know, Mr. Malfoy, said Professor McGonagall, looking a little tired, but the headmaster will want to see him. Sepulus reached out and pulled Draco's sleeve. It's okay, once Mr. Dumbledore misses me, right? Do you believe this nonsense? Draco's face turned a little pale, can you use your brain? Sepulus blinked innocently. I will bring Mr. Grindelwald safely back to the Slytherin lounge. Seeing Draco's unwillingness to let him go, Professor McGonagall finally gave a guarantee. After all, Draco had no the big mistake was just worrying about his classmates, and Professor McGonagall himself didn't quite understand why Dumbledore would pay attention to Cypress Grindelwald. Then I'm sorry to trouble you, Professor. After hearing Professor McGonagall's assurance, Draco also chose to give in, but he still did not forget to tell Sepulus, be careful. I know, I know, Sepulus couldn't help but laugh or cry, Mr. Dumbledore is not a scourge. He and Harry followed Professor McGonagall to Headmaster Dumbledore's office. Harry looked very nervous, too nervous. Serples couldn't stand it anymore and patted Harry on the shoulder. Don't be nervous Harry, it's okay. I didn't do it, said Harry and Serples. His face was pale. He was probably very frightened, and he was also taking a huge blame. He probably wasn't in a good mood. I believe it's not you, Serples patted Harry comfortingly, you shouldn't doubt anyone without evidence. Harry moved his lips towards Sepples gratefully. I will wait for you to come out at the door and then take you back to the lounge, Professor McGonagall said, go ahead. They followed the stone statue and climbed up the stairs. Professor McGonagall clicked the huge brass door knocker and let the two students into the room. This was not the first time that Sepulus came in, but it was the first time that Harry walked in. He was still worried, but he still couldn't hide his curiosity. Is that the sorting hat? Harry looked at a limp brown thing on the shelf. After Harry asked the question, the soft thing suddenly raised its head. Hey, Potter, long time no see. The sorting hat greeted Harry warmly, is there something you can't figure out? Harry was stunned for a moment. Oh, yes, but. You want to know if I have sorted you into the right house? The sorting hat said smartly, yes, your position is particularly difficult to place, just like Grindelwald. Yes, I saw you, Grindel. Whoa. I have also hesitated whether to send you to Ravenclaw, your thirst for knowledge is rare to me. Sir Prius blinked, but you followed my advice and went to Gryffindor, the sorting hat said briskly. Just like Harry, I firmly believe that you will be a good fit in Slytherin. Sepulus watched as Harry's face turned even paler. Good evening, Harry, and Serples, Dumbledore's voice came down from the upper stairs, holding a cup of hot cocoa in his hand, long time no see. I didn't do it. Sir, Harry rushed forward anxiously, I didn't, I just happened to pass by that way. I don't think it was you, Dumbledore said calmly. What? Harry was obviously stunned. He didn't seem to think that things would be that simple, but his eyes widened. You think it's not me, Professor? Yes, Harry, I don't think so, Dumbledore said, but his face looked more serious, but I still want to talk to you, to talk to you. Seppel stood innocently on one side, looking like a well-behaved and exquisite decoration. Can I ask why you summoned the Ash Snake in the Duel Club? Dumbledore looked gentle, 
but the questions he asked were not gentle at all. I didn't think much about it at the time, Seppel said. When Harry released the blazing flames, the first thing I thought of was that the ash snake could break through the flames, but I didn't think about it that much, I I'm sorry, sir. Dumbledore looked at Serpel seriously, and then nodded slowly. What about you, Harry? Dumbledore turned to Harry with a very gentle expression, I must ask you if there is anything you would like to tell me, anything. Very similar question. Serpels looked at Harry and wondered, did Dumbledore ask this question every time before educating his students? Or, Serpels lowered his eyes, or did Dumbledore know something from the beginning, are you just pretending to be stupid? Harry seemed to be thinking seriously, and he finally said, No, nothing, sir. Dumbledore looked at Harry longer this time. But in the end he just nodded slightly. If you say so, Harry, he smiled softly, looking a little tired, perhaps I can give you a gift. Dumbledore took the sorting hat off the shelf and handed it to Harry. Harry looked very confused, Sir, a gift, but it's not what you see. Dumbledore smiled. There were clearly visible wrinkles in the corners of his eyes. He was really not young anymore. You'd better take it with you at all times. It will all give you what you need, you'll have to return the sorting hat when it's over. The sorting hat grinned, at your service, Potter. Sepulus stood aside and watched all this. Finally, Professor McGonagall sent Harry and Serples back to the entrance of the lounge before she left. She looked very anxious, and before leaving, she did not forget to tell them separately not to run around in Hogwarts recently. It hasn't been very peaceful lately. Professor McGonagall looked shocked that Principal Dumbledore gave Harry the sorting hat, but she didn't say anything more and just told Harry not to lose the sorting hat. I can't imagine what next year's sorting ceremony will be like if I lose the sorting hat. Professor McGonagall's mouth tightened, and it seemed that she still didn't quite understand what Dumbledore was doing. But Harry didn't seem to understand. He was holding the sorting hat, rather than holding a Christmas apple just out of the oven. Sepples returned to the Slytherin lounge, and Draco was waiting for him in the lounge. When he saw Sepples coming back, he came over and looked Sepples up and down carefully. I'm really fine, Serples said, really dumbfounded. I'm very safe. Mr. Dumbledore just asked me and Harry for a few words. Draco still frowned. Dumbledore is not a good person. As a white wizard, he is better at manipulating people's hearts than most dark wizards. Sepples responded vaguely, maybe. You're just too kind, Draco finally said. The attacks on Justin and the nearly headless Nick add to what can only be described as a tense situation. After all, under normal circumstances, who would do anything to a ghost? Moreover, that was a ghost. Who would attack a dead person? And he actually succeeded. Although I don't know how he did it, Nick's look on his face made it clear that something was seriously wrong. Of. Oh. Blaze was so angry that he couldn't reason with him. He could only hold on to Sepples, the only one who knew about Nick's deal with him, and pour out his bitter words. It was so miserable that Sepples could only pat his hand and tell him he said it would be fine. It will definitely be fine. He will definitely cure Nick and save him. Otherwise, wouldn't his investment in Sepples be in vain? He will definitely not engage in this loss-making business, and Nick will definitely be cured. But he couldn't say this to Brace right now so Surpris could only pat Brace on the back, listen to Brace's complaints a little apologetically, and then act as a cute backdrop on the side. This attack happened right next to Christmas. Many people hurried home to celebrate Christmas, especially those children from Muggle families. They were extra nervous. Almost as soon as the notice of the holiday came out, they he jumped on the train home as if he was running away. But what's the use of running away now? Sepples looked at the students who hurriedly ran away with their luggage with pity. It was as if they would never come back. He promised Draco to visit the Malfoy Manor this Christmas, but he was also discussing with Draco whether he could stay and watch the Hogwarts Christmas dinner before leaving a day later. Of course Draco would not refuse this small proposal. In fact, he did not want to ride in the car with the hurried muggles on the first day. He agreed to Serple's request and stayed at Hogwarts for two more days. Days go again. Just in time for the Hogwarts Christmas party. I have to say that there is something special about the Christmas party at Hogwarts. There are not too many clear boundaries. Everyone celebrates Christmas together and can be crazy together for seven days. 
More than a dozen Christmas trees covered with silver frost and crisscrossed mistletoe and holly on the ceiling formed a beautiful decoration, as well as magical, uninterrupted snowflakes that did not fall cold or wet clothes. Surpris also bravely tried the Christmas-only eggnog. It was delicious and a little sweet. He couldn't control the amount for a while, and his face turned red after drinking it. Are you going back? Draco looked at Surpolis's face which was red due to alcohol, would you like to rest early or something? I feel pretty good, Sepulus smiled, looking really happy, it's rare to relax, I'll eat more and go back later. Draco sighed silently as he watched Surpolis lying on the table as if he was limp and boneless, grabbing the plate of Christmas pudding. Don't eat too much, it will cause indigestion, Draco silently moved the eggnog on one side away from Surpolis' hand, otherwise you will feel uncomfortable at night. Then what should I do if I feel uncomfortable? Surples blinked, spread his hands on the table, rested his head on his arms, and looked at Draco without blinking, which made Draco's eyes flicker. After a while, he swallowed his saliva. Shall I rub your belly? He said tentatively without starting or ending. Surpolis nodded with satisfaction. Okay, if you feel uncomfortable, I'll let you rub your belly for me. He seemed to be really satisfied with the answer to the question. He turned back happily and continued to battle wits with the pudding on the plate. Draco looked at Serpil's side face as he concentrated on fighting with the pudding, and felt that his face might be redder than the cherry on the pudding. Do you know what you are talking about? Draco muttered and looked away. It was already a little late when they left the auditorium. Serpils had become more awake this time, but his reaction was still a bit slow. However, he was not completely drunk and would not talk nonsense. However, if you asked him something, he would answer it. It'll just be a little more straightforward than usual. Alcohol makes reserved people candid. As a result, on the way back, they met Goyle and Graham Laboon who were stopped by the Weasley Prefect of Gryffindor. What are you doing here? Draco frowned. Goyle and Graham Laboon's family can be regarded as a subsidiary noble of the Malfoy family. As the head of the family, it is necessary for him to provide shelter for Goyle and Graham Laboon, although it is usually less needed. The Weasley Prefect gave Draco a dissatisfied look. What are you doing down here, Weasley? Draco smiled coldly, this road leads directly to the Slytherin Lounge. I can't think of any reason for you to hang out here. The Weasley brother looked extremely dissatisfied. You need to show more respect to the Prefects. I don't like your attitude. Sepples poked his head slightly behind Draco, Prefect. But you are a Prefect of Gryffindor, not Slytherin. He spoke innocently and blankly, and his blushing face made him look even more innocent. The Weasley family Prefect's face turned red with anger, but he didn't say anything else for a long time. Let's go. Draco raised his chin towards the Weasley family member, and then motioned for Goyle and Laboon to follow him, you two haven't been hanging out lately. The news has been bad recently. I, I dare say that Gryffindor idiot just now was trying to catch the Slytherin air to show off, there is no need to expose yourself to others. Quote. Gore and Graham Laboon looked at each other and nodded. Draco took Sepples in front, and Laboon and Goyle followed far behind, returning to the Slytherin lounge. What is the new password? Serpolis blinked and looked at the stone wall in front of him, a little confused. Pure blood, Draco sighed holding onto Serpil's shoulders, I should have stopped you from eating the last pudding. I forgot, Christmas pudding is spiked with rum. Quote. Sepulus just smiled softly. Stop laughing, Draco sighed deeply again, if you feel confused, go upstairs and take a nap. I'll wake you up early in the morning. I'm not confused, Sepulus blinked and moved closer to Draco to prove that he was not confused and that he was very awake. Just sit downstairs for a while. After saying that, he went to find a sofa near the fireplace and went in, just like a cat. Draco responded vaguely and went to sit on the sofa on the side. But for some reason, Laboon and Gore actually sat down on the sofa on the side. Why don't you go up? Draco frowned. Gower and Laboon have never participated in their activities. Their hobbies are eating and sleeping. Anyway, their families are rich and they have brothers. There is no need to worry about future housekeepers, as long as they are honest and don't do bad things. Son, just live casually and feel very comfortable. If you have money and leisure, you can do whatever you want. Although everyone in Slytherin won't say it, everyone in Slytherin is actually a little envious. Or, 
To be a little more exaggerated, it's not impossible to say it's jealousy. Who doesn't want to live a messy life, right? Ah, let's just sit for a while and take a rest. Gower and Laboon looked at each other, and Gower spoke. Draco frowned again. You two look weird. At least he didn't say much on this matter. Christmas, being appropriately crazy and untimely deserves to be forgiven. Draco took a newspaper from the table and prepared to pass the time, waiting for circles to stay down there enough before they went upstairs together. Sepulus' attention had already fallen to the wizard chess set that Blaze had placed by the fireplace. He was playing with the chess pieces with his eyes closed. Draco was a little worried that he would play with his eyes closed like that. Asleep here. If you fall asleep, just fall asleep, Draco told himself. The most important thing is to carry the person upstairs, just help him up if he can't carry him. And silently decided that he should exercise more during the holidays. He looked down at the newspaper, his mind filled with thoughts, and suddenly his eyes focused on one of the reports. Wow, this is interesting. Draco smiled while looking at the newspaper, then looked at Serple sitting on the sofa, and then stepped back and handed the newspaper in his hand to Goyle and Laboon. That was a report in the Daily Prophet. What was reported was the punishment for Mr. Weasley's unauthorized modification of the magical flying car. A fine of fifty galleons, Draco raised his lips mockingly, he's not even suspended. Dumbledore must have gone to the Weasley family to plead for mercy. Gore and Graham Laboon looked at each other again and put the newspapers in their hands. What? Draco frowned, feeling very dissatisfied that his sharing was in vain and that the two people opposite him didn't respond at all. You don't have anything to say. Gore laughed dryly. Arthur Weasley likes muggles too much, Draco snorted, and began to get angry with dissatisfaction, should have broken his wand and sent him to be a muggle, isn't he curious? Curious. They even ignore the laws they revised. What's the matter with you, Laboon? Draco frowned as Laboon's face twisted. Stomach hurts, K. Laboon groaned. Okay, okay, then you go to the hospital, Draco shrugged nonchalantly, but the Daily Prophet didn't get the news that any students in the school were attacked, Dumbledore must have been a fool again. I have made great efforts to monopolize the news. People outside don't know yet. Serpolis opened his eyes, his expression became much clearer, but once this Christmas holiday is over, the outside will definitely know. Perhaps Dumbledore spent money to prevent newspapers from reporting this matter. Draco guessed, if this is the case, it is not easy. He must have spent a considerable amount of money. Sepulus smiled softly. It is said that a student died when the secret room was opened last time. Draco suddenly became interested, his eyes lit up with a wicked smile, who do you think will die this time? It's not nice to speculate on the classmates around you like this, Draco, Sepris stood up a little, it will only make Slytherin's reputation worse, Slytherins are all fools and so on. Quote, Even if I didn't say that, no one would think that Slytherin wasn't a fool, Draco shrugged nonchalantly, guess what? Anyway, I hope it's that Granger. What? Serples raised his eyes. Don't you think Granger is in the way? He flaunts himself every day and seems to be the same in everything, it is said that something was lost in the Godfather's potion office recently. I think it was probably Weasley who did it, and he plans to subsidize it. Home use. Draco snorted, after all, his wand hasn't been replaced yet. This has nothing to do with Granger, Sepulus laughed, don't take it out on yourself, Draco. Of course, the one I most want to be petrified is Potter or Weasley, but unfortunately, one of them is a pureblood and the other is a half-blood. I can only hope that Granger will be unlucky. Draco laughed again, you know, did the Godfather lose anything? Is it expensive? I'll buy some and give them to him so that he won't be angry. The horn of the bicorn and the skin of the African tree snake, Serpolis answered Draco's question softly, are not very precious materials, but together, and under the current situation, it makes Professor Snape was angry. Is this the main ingredient of some kind of potion? Draco sat up slightly. Well, there are quite a few that are suitable, but the one that fits the most is Polyjuice Potion, which is very suitable for fishing in troubled waters. Maybe the heir of Slytherin stole it. Draco relaxed and leaned on the sofa again, I'm really curious who this person is. Sepulus pursed his lips and smiled. Kay Laboon, who had been silent all this time, suddenly spoke urgently, you must know something about who controlled all this. Draco interrupted. 
I've said it many times, Laboon, how many more times do you want me to say it to you? But you always know more, Draco, Goyle said, with a hint of flattery, you always know more, tell us Draco. I don't know any more, Draco said, becoming increasingly impatient. Father told me not to be too noisy and not to show off. There have been too many things lately. The Ministry of Magic didn't know what happened and actually ransacked the Malfoy Manor. My father is very busy. Oh, that's too bad. Goyle said dryly. Yeah, it's really bad, but the Ministry of Magic found nothing. Fortunately, the Ministry of Magic didn't find anything, but our secret room is really well hidden, and everything is hidden in. Draco. Serples's voice was light, interrupting Draco's unfinished words. What's wrong? Draco asked with a little concern, not dissatisfied at all being interrupted. I'm going out to take a breath. Serples said softly and skillfully. I'll stay with you, Draco said and was about to get up, but Serples moved faster than him and raised his hand to push him back to the sofa. No, I'll just blow some air and come back, Sepulus shook his head and smiled sweetly, can Laboon and Goyle come with me? Laboon, you have a stomachache. I'll go to the hospital wing to get some medicine soon. The potion is ready, Serples insisted, Draco said nothing more, just nodded and told Serples to go back quickly and don't get a headache from the wind. You really don't need me to accompany you. Draco finally asked again. It's not that fragile, Sepulus waved his hand, motioning for Laboon and Goyle to walk in front of him, I'll be back soon. In order to seize the time, Serples pulled out his wand as soon as he left the lounge, and faced the backs of Gower and Graham Laboon who had already run a few steps ahead. Stand where you are, don't play tricks, dears, Serpra's voice still contained a smile, turn around slowly and come back, face me, and put your hands where I can see them. Goyle turned around first and smiled nervously, Sepris, what's going on? What are you doing with the wand? Hum, go to the left. There is a corridor over there that is not very crowded. We can have a chat. Serples waved his wand, let's talk about what you did with the real Goyle and Laboon, and sneaked into the Slytherin lounge to do something. Gore and Graham Laboon looked at each other, Gore scratched his hair, we can explain. Otherwise, what am I doing now? Sepulus looked at the two guys in front of him teasingly, if I didn't intend to listen to your explanation, I would have tied you up and taken you to Professor Snape's office, he must have I really want someone to pay for the loss of his potion ingredients. In the deserted corridor, Sepples watched Goyle and Laboon in front of him gradually shrink, and finally turned into Harry Potter and Ron Weasley wearing rather ill-fitting clothes. To make a long story short, you too, Sepulus's wand was still pointed at the two guys, if Draco sees something is wrong and comes over, he won't be as easy to talk to as me. We just want to know more about the Chamber of Secrets, Harry said hurriedly, taking a step forward and trying to grab Serple's wrist. After Serple's took a step back and lost his grip, he he showed a very hurt expression. He seemed like a puppy whose food bowl had been kicked over by me. Sir Prius suddenly thought, then he relaxed a little and put away his wand. I won't kick the puppy's food bowl, I'm a good person. Then you came to the Slytherin common room. Serples raised his eyebrows, you think you are fooling me. We just thought the Slytherin students might know a little more. Ron snorted, it wasn't intentional. Sepulus thought he had heard the funniest joke today. Oh my god, you all drank polyjuice potion and got into the Slytherin lounge. Did you say it was intentional? It's not like I did anything bad, and it didn't cause you any losses, Ron took a step forward, you didn't suffer either. Seppel simply laughed angrily. Although I am not willing to make casual comments with the greatest malice, I will not refuse to point out the facts. For example, you were really a fool. Sir Prius watched Harry holding the angry Ron, and curled up his lips, Go away, for Harry's sake, I will pretend that you have never been here, but if there is another time, you will come into Professor Snape's office and start your theory. Harry glanced at Serples with an apologetic look, then pulled Ron and hurried away. Sir Prius stood outside for a while longer before returning to the Slytherin common room. Been outside for a long time. Draco looked up at Sir Prius. Really, Sir Prius tilted his head, I don't think so. Maybe I was still not very awake at that time and was a little confused. Where's Laboon and Goyle? Draco nodded, agreeing with Sepulus' statement, they always look weird tonight. I don't know, they ran away within a few steps of going out, Serpulus shrugged. 
Maybe Laboon's stomach really hurts. When are we leaving tomorrow? I'll clean up when I get back. Luggage. You don't need to bring anything. Draco smiled and stood up from the sofa. Malfoy Manor has everything. You only need to bring a few of your favorite books. Sepulus nodded. So the next day, Sepulus carried a very light small box and boarded the Hogwarts Express. He didn't bring any books, and even Tom and Natasha were left at school. Natasha is hibernating, and Tom needs more time to study how to absorb a person's life force and transfer it to himself, and he needs a certain degree of rest. He feels that he has been overusing his brain recently, and he needs to slow down. Calm yourself down to avoid problems arising from your rush for quick success, in short, everyone is busy. Mr. Lucius Malfoy, Draco's father, this is the first time that Surples has seen him. He is a handsome and arrogant nobleman. He cannot say that he welcomes Surples arrival, but the etiquette is in place. Sepples felt that this was done for his father and guardian, not for him. However, Narcissa Malfoy, Draco's mother, was a very gentle woman. She was not as reserved and distant as Serples imagined. Instead, she kindly gave Serples a hug and thanked him for being in first grade. Taking care of Draco in the Forbidden Forest. Serples was a little embarrassed. My mother was a daughter of the Black family, Draco told Serples after Serples implicitly expressed that he was a gentle mother to Narcissa Malfoy. The Black family is more or less the same. It's a little crazy, but my mom is the only normal person in there. They're all crazy. Sepulus became slightly interested, how crazy. It's hard to say the specifics. I can only say that the relatives of the Black family who are still alive are living a happy life in Azkaban. Draco thought for a moment, my Aunt Bellatrix, an extremely famous Death Eater, now lives in Azkaban, and my Uncle Sirius also has a lifelong solitary room in Azkaban. Sepulus said, wow, it's gone. I had an aunt a few years ago, but she was removed from the family after marrying a muggle, I don't know much about it. After all, the Black family is basically gone in name only, and the final inheritance rights or it will fall on me. Draco shrugged, it is said that the Black family's old house is quite big, but I think the money to repair it after so many years should be quite large. Draco waved his hand, that doesn't matter anymore. We still want to talk about some happy topics on Christmas, but Sepples, promise me you won't drink at the Yule Ball, okay? Sepulus looked away in disbelief. Everything mentioned above is a bit unplayable. Malfoy Manor, this place was condensed by Surples during his visit in just a few days. In summary, it is expensive, and everything is extremely expensive. Various varieties of expensive flowers are planted in the well-designed garden, and even some precious medicinal herbs are placed in the garden because they look good. There are several story high fountains and free roaming white peacocks, luxurious furniture, and marble. Fireplaces and gilded mirrors, large entrance halls, portraits on the walls, marble floors almost entirely covered with ornate carpets. So rich, Serple sat in an inconspicuous corner, holding his cake plate, silently watching the dance in the living room. As the only heir to Malfoy Manor, Draco was the undisputed protagonist of the ball. There were endless people chatting with him or asking him to dance. Sepples didn't want to get in the way, so he shrank down after finding a seat. Although there are also familiar faces, for example, Pansy and Astra are here, and their goal is Draco, or the goal is to become the mistress of Malfoy Manor in the future. Sepulus had no interest in getting involved in these matters. It's better to hide and watch the excitement and rest. The people who come here are all handsome men and beauties, and it's very eye-catching to see. He hid and ate his cake, but suddenly someone came and took the initiative to say hello to Sepulus. He is a handsome and somewhat handsome young man. He is so pretty that there is no need to ask. Just by looking at him, you can tell that the boy he likes is most likely to be handsome. Hello, the young man's voice was soft and soft, are you Cypress Grindelwald? Serples was surprised that someone would come and talk to him at such a dance, so he nodded hesitantly, hello. Don't be too nervous, the beautiful young man smiled beautifully at Serples, I just came to see who I lost to, my name is Otis Lestrange. Serples just looked at him, I don't understand what you are talking about. Ah, I didn't introduce myself well enough. Otis smiled, and his smile was so beautiful that people couldn't take their eyes away, let's put it this way, I was sent by the Lestrange family to seduce I also have a sister who is the choice of Bulwer Wolf. 
The fork held and Sepulus' hand suddenly paused in the air. He was surprised by the straightforward words used by the person in front of him. Are you surprised? Otis looked at Serpris with a smile and held his chin up. There is nothing we can do about it. The less strange family is getting weaker and weaker. Now it is at the end of its strength. The Wolf family although they are the new rich in Germany, it seems that their ambitions are definitely not limited to Germany. Of course, the less strange family will be willing to give some gifts to establish a relationship with them. Quote. Otis smiled narrowly with his beautiful eyes. My sister was the first gift, but unfortunately, Bulwer Wolf refused to accept her. Surpris didn't speak. He just nodded as if he heard it, and then continued to eat his cake slowly. My sister and I are specially trained gifts. We have Vila blood. Although we are not destined to become the first wife, we can be pampered sparrows and be able to tie the hearts of men. It turns out that Bulwer Woe Wolf actually rejected my sister. At this point, Otis opened his eyes a little angrily. To be honest, Seppel said that any expression on such a beautiful person's face is beautiful. This makes no sense, so we firmly believed that Bulwer Wolf liked men, so we rejected my sister, so I stepped in instead, our plan at the time was that if it didn't work, we would go together. My sister and I are twins. Such a good gift would be useless if you don't sleep, right? If it were you, would you sleep? Sepples lowered his chin and said, I'm underage. Otis's eyes widened again, ah, Wolf likes this one, like the small one. Serple's head was full of black lines. Otis may also realize that what he said is a bit too much, and tilts his face, in the end, Wolf didn't even want me. The family spent a lot of effort to send me to Wolf's bed. I he was only wrapped in gauze and drugged, but he locked himself in the bathroom and refused to sleep. Otis's tone still contained unconcealable frustration, am I not good looking? Good looking, Serpolis replied pertinently, it's really beautiful, I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, it just looks good. Surprius even thought a little guiltily about Otis's posture and expression on the bed, guilt, guilt, guilt. Why doesn't he want to sleep with me? Otis snorted. This question was too forward for Serples to answer, so Serples continued to eat the cake. Later, when the incense had dissipated, he finally came out of the bathroom. Without even looking at me, he cleaned up the house and me with a wave of his wand and threw him out directly. Otis was angry. He said angrily, I didn't want to be reconciled, so I asked him why, and he told me that he had someone he liked. When I asked, he even closed the door. Surprius felt that he couldn't answer this, he was hasty, and he should have left before Otis sat down. But without the regret medicine, Serpolis did not run away immediately, which established his current restlessness. Later, I inquired in many ways, and after many twists and turns, I finally managed to find out about you, so I was unwilling to give in. I came to see what kind of person it was that could make Wolf reject me so simply. Quote. Otis looked at Surprius. I thought she would be so beautiful, beautiful, but not shocking. Surprius began to rack his brains to think of a reason he should use to leave. Have you two slept together? Otis said without surprising, and as soon as he opened his mouth, he fried Sepulus until he was crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. I'm underage, Serples said with a hint of sadness in his tone. So what's the matter? Everything that should be developed has been developed. What can't be done? Otis blinked. I'm telling you, you need to understand this knowledge as soon as possible, Wolf he is not young, and it is easy for you to suffer if you are young and it is your first time. Serpolis couldn't stand listening anymore, I have to say goodbye in advance. But Otis just looked at Serples and smiled, and stopped Serples again, don't leave, he just said a few words. Surprius sighed. I really have nothing to say to you. It's possible if you think about it, Otis laughed. Aren't you curious, if I lose the wolf family to rely on, who will I seduce next? Surpris was silent for a few seconds and sat down again. When they speak, you, who are you going to seduce? Surples sighed and sat down. It was a bit too straightforward, and it was very inconsistent with the subtle aesthetics of aristocrats that Surples had recently deeply implanted in his heart. As a result, Serples felt very uncomfortable when he said it. I went to the Knott family's family dance yesterday, and today I came to the Malfoy family's family dance, I plan to choose from these two. Otis's beautiful eyes were flowing, and he smiled. After all, these two the family is a pretty good choice. 
We are all underage, Sepulus sighed again, are you a little too ahead of your time? It's a bit ahead of its time, Otis agreed with Serple's words, but there's no other way. It's best to attack the most valuable ones first. My sister and I won't be young for long, and the canary eats youth. Rice. His slender fingers with neatly manicured nails rested on Serple's wrist, guess who I plan to attack? Surpriz was silent for a moment, the Knot family. Otis showed a very surprised expression. Hey, you guessed it right. It's easy to guess, Sepples sighed deeply. Knot's family is in decline, and rumors of their early death mean that their family reputation is not very good. If it is run properly, your sister might be able to survive. If you can get Mrs. Knot, you have no reason not to choose the Knot family and provoke the flourishing Malfoy family. He looked at Otis's fingers on his wrist and sighed deeply, so why are you telling me this? If the person in front of him really failed to win Wolf's favor simply because of his own reasons, then he couldn't afford to talk to himself so much. So in fact, the friend of the Lestrange family in front of him has learned the rules of implicit speech of the nobles. Although the words and sentences are not so implicit, the implicitness and twists and turns in it are not compromised. Wow, so smart. Otis in front of him smiled exaggeratedly again, took away the hand on Sir Prius's wrist, folded it and put it in front of him, revealing a softer and more charming person. In terms of appearance, it was a more formal expression, because I am studying the third way out, and I want to put my treasure on you, little mister. Grindelwald, Sepulus looked at him silently. Behind you is the great Mr. Grindelwald, and the current head of the Rosier family, Ms. Rosier, has recently announced that you are her sole heir, you may not be inferior to volume. The new rich man of the husband's family. Otis sat up straight and looked at Surprius' face seriously. You want to gain the power of the dragon. Sepulus understood what Otis meant. Yes, I am not willing, Otis admitted openly. I am not willing to be manipulated by others all my life, and I am not willing to let my sister live such a life. One day, my lust will fade and my love will fade. In what situation, why can't I be the head of the Lestrange family? Sir Prius looked at Otis in front of him and remained silent for a longer time this time. For a moment he put the plate in his hand on the table aside, not looking at Otis. This is a big gamble. He said softly, you also know that I am only a second-year student who is not in third grade. I may not be able to give you what you want. Betting on anyone is a bet, so I might as well bet on you. Otis responded quickly, and it seemed that he had carefully considered, you can be favored by Dumbledore and be taken over by Mr. Grindelwald. As an adopted son, being able to win the heart of that stubborn guy named Bulwer Wolf is definitely not something you can do casually. You have your own abilities. Otis didn't give Sepulus a chance to interrupt and continued to add, I also know about your reputation in school. I don't believe that anyone can be a completely good person, because I know that all my smiling faces are just fake. Yes, so you must have a big plan. Be careful what you say. Serples interrupted him coldly. Otis coughed and realized that he was a little too excited just now, I made a mistake, Mr. Sepples. I mean, I will definitely be useful. I am useful. After finishing speaking, as if to ease the relationship, he blinked his beautiful eyes again, I still sleep well. No matter what I plan to do in the future, whether it succeeds or not, with the support of the huge wealth of the Rosier family, I can keep you and your sister living the rest of their lives without worries. Sir Prius coughed, pretending that he didn't hear it. Otis said something like a tiger or a wolf, you have a good idea. Otis did not deny it. People are always greedy. I can't promise you anything now, but I said I will consider your proposal. If I need you in the future, you must provide me with your friendship, Surprius said slowly and carefully, that makes sense, right? Otis nodded. I understand, I understand what you mean. I will provide you with a sum of money. You can go into business, buy real estate, or do whatever you want. I just need to see the money to make money, Sepulus continued slowly, you come to me and bring your certificate of nomination. I need you to prove your ability. Otis's face showed a little smile. Serving you, Lord Sepulus, I will not let you down. Sepulus nodded cautiously. After a moment of silence, he suddenly took out his wand and tapped a wine glass next to him. The transformation spell easily turned the wine glass into an exquisite test tube. Then he handed the test tube to Otis, put some blood in it. Quote. Otis, just in case, 
Serple said calmly, I'll keep it. If you do anything that bothers me, I'll curse you and make you look bad. So far, Otis's position in the family is still a daughter flower looking for attachment. If this face with Vila blood is ruined, Otis's situation in the family will definitely plummet in an instant. Otis smiled bitterly, but he obediently cut his hand, put a test tube of blood and handed it to Serples. You are so cautious, Lord Serples. Really? Serples blinked innocently. I didn't think so. So who are you going to seduce next? I seduce you. Otis winked at Surprius, this way at least I have an explanation to my family, and you won't expose me before you complete the task you gave me, right? Dear Lord Sepulus, Surprius felt the hairs on his back explode. He leaned back in the armchair silently, I'm underage. Otis responded with a hearty laugh. Until he returned to Hogwarts from Malfoy's house, Surprius felt that his steps were somewhat wandering. It was too ahead of its time. Before the two returned to France after the dance, Otis Lestrange left a few pamphlets for Serples, saying they were very useful knowledge, and asked Serples to read them by himself after he returned to his room, and take a good look at them. Learn something. Sepples had a gut feeling that Otis might not be able to give him anything good, but Sepples still opened the books, flipped through two pages, and hurriedly stuffed all the books into his suitcase. Ground floor. After a long time, Sepulus felt that the temperature on his face had subsided. After hesitating for a long time, he reached out and pulled out the book again, and turned over it with a blushing face. At this time, Surprius suddenly felt a little bit resentful about why he had such a good memory. Those things that Otis had specially marked for attention, those key positions that Otis had specially circled, it was really a lifesaver. Leotis also left a special note in the booklet to tell Serples, saying that all European nobles are sensible, early, and ask Serples to study hard, and don't wait until the time when real swords and guns are needed. He doesn't know anything about being led by someone's nose. At the end of the booklet, there are actually several photos of wolf changing clothes. Sepples held the photo with mixed emotions. Although I don't know how Otis took this photo, wolf's figure is really good. No matter how many times I see it, I feel so handsome, and the muscles feel good, and the soft parts are soft and elastic. The hard places are also particularly hard. Still a little too ahead of its time. Seppel squatted on the ground silently, stretched out his hands to cover his face, and transformed into a roasted mushroom. This cannot be seen by Tom. Surprius suddenly thought that this was a bit too shameful. He was embarrassed and kept it under his clothes, in case Tom found out by himself. It was too ahead of its time. Surprius's heart was floating, and it was only when he returned to Hogwarts and lay on his bed in his dormitory that he felt his heart return to his stomach. How was your time at Malfoy's house? Tom didn't know that Serples had been hit hard during the Christmas holiday. He was so shocked that he came to talk to Serples very happily and was ready to share. Share your vacation experiences. It's quite interesting, Sepulus coughed. The dance was quite interesting. I also learned a few dances, although I may not have much chance to dance for a while. Oh, yes, I met someone. The less strange family from France has come to seek refuge with me. Tom raised an eyebrow and smiled. Wow, you are already so famous. People come here to seek asylum from you. How much of it is sincerely for me? Surpris shook his head. It's mainly because of his father's identity and Aunt Rosier's strong support. It's not me who he likes. What do you think of people? Tom touched his chin, is there any value in absorbing it? We really need some interpersonal relationships to broaden our horizons. If you are always stuck in the world of school, you will not be able to see the outside world. I think he is pretty good. Although sometimes he speaks a little too straightforwardly, on the whole he can speak well and behave well. I gave him some money and asked him to study money to make money. If he wants to buy Diagon Alley in the future, that's a big number. It's not a bad thing to earn more, and let him prove his worth by the way. Serpolis coughed again, the time limit I gave him is until I take a vacation this year. We'll see then, if everything goes well, you can meet him. Tom nodded thoughtfully. What about you, have you gained anything new in school? Serpolis asked Tom. Everything is going according to plan, Tom suddenly frowned when he mentioned this, but Dumbledore doubts you. Doubt me, Serpolis was a little surprised, I definitely didn't leave any clues, he had no reason to doubt me. But he suspected you, after you left, 
he came to your dormitory, rummaged through all your things, and used magic to detect it. Tom frowned, fortunately, I am a very weak accident. The resurrected soul, if Riddle's diary is there, something will definitely happen. Sepulus frowned, he doesn't trust you, Sepples, Tom and Sepples said softly, many times, hasn't he? Just because you are inextricably linked to that riddle, he behaves so casually I just doubt you, he is not a good person. Seeing that Serples still didn't speak, Tom continued to speak. Do you think he brought you into the magical world for your own good? He just wanted to keep you under his nose and control you, to prevent you from doing any bad things, he has never trusted you. Sepulus waved his hand, I know. He took a deep breath, it doesn't matter how he looks at me, even if he thinks I'm the same bad person as Riddle. I did not do anything good, but I'm different from Riddle. I don't have to ask anyone can prove anything, I have a clear conscience. Tom said, oh, and nodded. Since he is suspicious, he must be more cautious in his subsequent actions. I can't come forward again, Serpolis pressed his forehead. You have been staying in the secret room recently, okay Tom. I will wait until the end, come forward when you take Lockhart to the Chamber of Secrets. Tom did not refuse. I have no problem, after all, we are for a better future. Sepples took a deep breath, so hard that he felt a tightness in his chest. Yes, it's all worth it for a better future. So in the first week after Christmas, Hermione Granger of Gryffindor was attacked, Penelope Clearwater of Ravenclaw was attacked, and Rubius the gamekeeper of Hogwarts was attacked. Hagrid was taken away as a suspect and taken into custody in Azkaban. And in the second week, very quickly, blood writing was left on the wall again, and Ginny Weasley was taken into the Chamber of Secrets. A line of blood writing was left on the wall, which was shocking, the girl's bones will be left in the secret room forever. It's time to act. Serples knew it was time to take action when he heard the school's announcement telling all students to return to their dormitories and not to step out of the lounge without the company of professors. He pretended to complain, complaining that he had memorized historical chronicles until early in the morning for the history of magic exam and now he didn't take the exam. Then he sighed, making sure everyone around him heard him and said that he was going to catch up on his sleep in the dormitory. He slept in darkness making sure that no one would disturb him. He took his wand and the invisibility potion he had prepared early and slipped out of the Slytherin lounge. Sir Prius drank the invisibility potion and walked on the way to Gryffindor Tower. His original plan was to imitate Lockhart's handwriting and leave a note saying that he went to find the Chamber of Secrets and rescue people. It was not for nothing that he helped Lockhart proofread the new book for so long. He could ensure that no one could see the problem. Even if Lockhart himself looked at it, he would never deny that it was his handwriting. Then he knocked Lockhart unconscious and took him into the secret room to complete the extraction of life force. Then he let the basilisk, Ginny, Lockhart, and Riddle all die in the secret room, making everything a real secret. This is the ultimate goal. But there is more to it than that. Ginny's life was entrusted to Riddle, and the lives of Riddle and the basilisk were entrusted to Harry Potter. After absorbing Blaze's deal with Nick from Gryffindor, Sepulus set his sights on the ghost of Ravenclaw, the cold Lady Grey who never smiled. It is said that she is the daughter of the founder of Ravenclaw. She has always been indifferent and taciturn, but even Dumbledore wants to betray her face. Serple spent many days and nights going to the observatory to look at the stars, and then he finally spoke to Ms. Grey. He still packaged himself as a good boy who was worried about his classmates, and made Ms. Grey take the initiative to express her concern about Harry Potter's actions and make sure that he was not the one who opened the Chamber of Secrets. The information provided by Ms. Grey allowed Serpres to know clearly what Harry was doing every day. He knew that Harry had basically understood the situation in the Chamber of Secrets and analyzed a lot of things. He also knew that Dumbledore sent the sorting hat given to Harry spit out a sword after Ginny was taken into the Chamber of Secrets. The sword belonged to Godric Gryffindor, and that thing was powerful enough to kill the basilisk. Everything is perfect, so in the first step, Sepulus will send information to Ron Weasley, send a piece of paper that says where the secret room is, and will burn after reading it, telling Ron Weasley where the secret room is. And Weasley, who is easygoing and not very good at using his brain, will definitely encourage Harry to take risks because he is worried about his sister's safety. 
For this purpose, he first went to the Gryffindor Tower, but he heard Harry and Ron whispering on the way. There was no one in front of them, maybe they both used some method to become invisible. Sepples did not make a sound, but carefully leaned against the wall, following the sound and following their footsteps. Why did you run out? You can't be so reckless, just go out and look around when you don't have any news. Sir Prius followed the two of them all the way to Lockhart's office. Serpolis said to himself, Wow, even though I don't know what your plan is, your plan seems to overlap with mine. But what are you doing with Lockhart? Serpolis thought about many possibilities, but he didn't expect that Harry and Ron would actually come to ask for help. Do they really think Lockhart is a man of genuine talent? It's better to beg him than to beg Professor Snape. Although Professor Snape will only deduct your points and send you back to the Gryffindor common room, telling you that this is not something that you students should care about. Sir Prius felt that if he had not drank the invisibility potion, the expression on his face would have looked wonderful when he looked in the mirror now. So he silently took another tube of potion and poured it into his mouth. At this time, Lockhart was already packing his things and preparing to run away. Sir Prius leaned against the wall and sighed, thinking to himself, what should I do? Is it possible that he really has to step forward and guide the matter to the right route? That won't work, then Dumbledore won't be there by then. What a good explanation. At this moment, Harry and Ron finally realized that Lockhart was a fool. Harry used a beautiful Expelliarmus to take away Lockhart's wand. Then they pointed their wands at Lockhart and told him Hart and the others happened to know where the secret room is, and now they need Lockhart's help to find the way. Sir Prius almost applauded this divine turn of events. It seems that Bimelon is still useful. Although there are some problems with the process and sequence, Lockhart, Harry and Ron will still appear in the Chamber of Secrets, and Harry is carrying the official Gryffindor on his back. Sword, it seems that killing the Basilisk is not impossible. Marvelous. Sir Prius picked up Lockhart's wand that flew out and put it in his arms, then continued to follow these guys carefully, and then watched Harry and the others escorting Lockhart away. Arriving at the entrance to the bathroom where Moaning Myrtle lived. This is indeed the entrance to the secret room. Back then, Riddle was wandering around Hogwarts with a basilisk and accidentally killed a student, and that student was Myrtle Elizabeth Warren. After her death, she remained obsessed with becoming a ghost, crying sadly in the bathroom where she died all day long, causing no one in Hogwarts to want to set foot here again. In a sense, it also provided a layer of security and confidentiality for the secret room. And Harry nervously asked Myrtle where she last saw the basilisk, he actually knew about the basilisk, and Sepulus was very impressed, then pointed at the pool in front of Myrtle, he coughed cautiously and spoke in parcel tongue, open. Exactly, Sir Prius almost applauded at this. The faucet began to emit a dazzling white light and rotate rapidly, and then the pool also started to move, slowly rising and rising, and finally a very thick water pipe was exposed, which was enough for an adult to get in. Sir Prius watched as Harry and Ron forced Lockhart to jump into the water pipe first, and then jumped in one after another before he followed behind and silently held the iron handle on the other side. In fact, this water pipe was not a slide, but it had a handle, but no one among the three of them saw it in their excitement and nervousness. Sir Prius saw Myrtle looking curiously at the entrance of the cave. He smiled softly and then said, close the door. The pool slowly fell again, and Myrtle's curious face gradually disappeared. At the bottom of the water pipe is a darker, deeper tunnel, as silent as a tomb. There is also a huge snake shed in it, which was shed by the basilisk, Salazar Slytherin's pet. Harry and the others obviously thought that this was a journey for three people. They had no idea that Serples was walking with them beside them, and at a corner where everyone's booth was in a very suitable position, he took out Lockhart. The magic wand exploded the stone wall above his head. It was three very fast spells. Two of them exploded the stone wall above the head to form three sections to separate the three of them. The third spell knocked Lockhart, who was at the end, unconscious. In fact, it is because Harry Ron has no experience in threatening people that he can get out of this position that is convenient for Serples. Anyway, if Serples threatens people and escorts them away, Lockhart must be let go. Those in front need to be tied up. Still inexperienced, Sir Prius smiled silently in his heart as he listened to Harry and Ron's screams, but I hope you'd better take the next adventure without learning from experience. 
he waved his wand, and a beautiful levitating spell dragged Lockhart's limp body and took him another way, leading him to Slytherin's Chamber of Secrets. Riddle was waiting for him there. I heard an explosion outside. Riddle approached Circles and gave Circles a light hug. Behind him stood Tom, who nodded towards Circles. I blew it up, Circles said lightly. Harry Potter came here with his friends. I did some tricks to separate them. In the end, Harry will come alone. See you. He looked at Riddle with a smile on his face. I thought you would want to have a good talk with him alone. No matter what, he will make you suffer a big loss in the future, right? Riddle laughed when he heard this, and even put his arm around Circles's waist and spun him around, completely giving Tom no chance to get close to Circles. That's so considerate, Thorpe. How about you sit aside for a while and I'll have a nice chat with Harry Potter later? Surpris blinked. What about Tom? Riddle turned back and glanced at Tom behind him, let him go to the back. I think he can study and understand the conversion of life force by himself, right? His tone was teasing. You can't have been working with me for so long, openly or covertly, but you haven't even figured out this little thing, right? After he finished speaking, he didn't care about the expression on Tom's face. He just looked at Circles, smiled and put his arm around Circles' shoulders, my proposal has always been effective. Give up this useless thing and choose come with me, a waste like him doesn't deserve you. Surpris just smiled softly. I thought we had reached an agreement on this topic, Tom is very good. Very good, Riddle sneered at this, how can a waste that can't even use magic be better? But he looked at Surples's expression and finally did not continue on this topic. He just picked up Seppel's affectionately and spun him around in a circle, and then let go of Seppel's before he got angry. I won't tell you if you don't want to hear it, Riddle said with a considerate look. You will know in the future when you find that he is useless, but my promise is always valid. You can always turn back. Come choose mine. Seppel's just raised the corner of his mouth politely. For this riddle, there is no point in following his will. You have to confront him and ignore what he says. Only in this way will he find you interesting, although it is not as good as that person who is crazy, but it is not as good. Where to go? Tom just listened, but didn't say much. In the end, he just nodded towards Sepples, turned around and dragged away Lockhart, who was unconscious and limp like a puddle of mud, and left. You have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Harry so it's not convenient for me to show up, right? Surpreus' eyes fell on the motionless Ginny lying under the Slytherin statue, how is she? It's okay, I still need a little time to complete the entire conversion process. Riddle's eyes followed Sepples and landed on Ginny. She is a stupid little girl. She actually had several opportunities to escape from me. He was under control, but he was too timid and timid, so unfortunately, she ended up lying here. Quote, Sepulus looked at Riddle's chatting side face and breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. Tom Marvolo Riddle is too confident at this age. He does have the capital to be confident. He is outstanding, handsome, and a descendant of the great Salazar Slytherin. He also knows what earth-shattering things he will do in the future. So he doesn't take anyone seriously. He doesn't care about Tom, he thinks Tom is just a defective soul, he doesn't care about Ginny, he thinks Ginny is just a stupid girl full of worries, he doesn't recognize Harry, he thinks Harry is just a lucky guy he's just a guy, how could it affect his big plan? The only person he cared about was Dumbledore, but Dumbledore was called to the Ministry of Magic for a meeting because of the Chamber of Secrets. So he chose to attack at this time and brought Ginny into the secret room, because she felt that as long as Dumbledore was gone, no one would be able to threaten him. But really not, Sir Prius smiled at Riddle turned around and walked to a groove behind a stone wall, even putting on his sunglasses. The next battlefield is left to Harry, hoping that Harry can give him some face and kill the basilisk. In this case, he will only have to clean up the battlefield and kill Riddle afterwards. Riddle had no objection to Serple's movement of retracting into the groove, and even looked at it a few more times in amusement. Then he straightened his clothes and turned around to prepare for the arrival of Harry Potter. Harry walked into the secret room a few minutes later. He stumbled and looked very nervous. The wand in his hand was pointed straight ahead. After seeing Ginny lying under the statue, he quickly rushed over and knelt down. Ginny's side shouted. Surpreus sighed in the shadow of the groove. Dumbledore's education was not adequate, so how could he throw away his wand in a hurry? 
You all knew there was a monster in the Chamber of Secrets, and you threw the wand away. Did you then fight the monster hand to hand? She won't wake up. After leaning against the stone pillar for a while to admire Harry's desperate plea, Riddle spoke. In fact, he didn't hide, but Harry was too nervous. After seeing Ginny, he didn't care about anything else. He only remembered to rush over to check on Ginny. He didn't see Riddle on the side. Tom, Tom Riddle. What Sepulus didn't expect was that Harry actually called out Riddle's name. It seemed that there were many things happening in places that he didn't pay attention to and that Ms. Gray didn't pay attention to either. Riddle was still playing steadily. He was laughing at Harry and Ginny. He picked up Harry's wand with a careless smile on his face, but he stuffed the wand into his own pocket. It was only at this time that Harry realized something was wrong. For some reasons that Serples didn't know, Harry seemed to trust Riddle very much. Even after Riddle ridiculed him for a long time, he didn't feel that Riddle was wrong and even persuaded him. Riddle help him, they need to leave quickly before the basilisk comes here. Harry glared at Riddle's hand in his pocket, what do you mean? The basilisk will not come back until it is summoned. Riddle smiled softly, watching the expression on Harry's face gradually change from confusion to panic. He enjoyed the process, don't you understand? All this, it's all Ginny Weasley's doing. What? Harry's voice was tight as he hugged Ginny tightly, who was lying on the ground completely unresponsive. Don't you understand? It's Ginny, it's all Ginny. Riddle smiled, and told Harry the lie he and Sepples had made up early in the morning, it was Ginny who opened the Chamber of Secrets, it was Ginny strangled the rooster in the school, it was Ginny who wrote those scary words on the wall, it was Ginny who unleashed the basilisk and attacked the students in the academy and the poor kitten. No way, Harry said stiffly. Is it impossible? Riddle smiled softly, but that's the fact. Ginny Weasley is dissatisfied with her parents. She doesn't understand why she has to live such a poor life, with old robes and books, never getting new things, and having to endure so many brothers even though they are all pure blood families. The mockery of the poor adolescent girl. She complained about her parents, why do they have to be so kind to muggles, why do they have to be so pure and honest, why do other pure blood noble families have everything they want, and why do other employees working in the Ministry of Magic have such a good life? Very good, but her parents have to spend so much money in the muggle world and let her live such a terrible life. So she hates muggles, and she gets rid of muggleborns in the school. Riddle's voice lightly convicted Ginny. The Weasley family is really a very weird family in the wizarding world. There are too many children and the financial situation does not allow each child to live a good life. They can only rely on their grades to rank to see if they are qualified to get new things. Although the parents at home are full of love for their children, it is hard to deny that these parents are a little out of line. Giving a lot of love to these many children is completely insufficient and will only make them feel to the point of being ignored and not loved. In this case, Ginny's dissatisfaction and hatred sounded very, very reasonable. But, but Ginny can't, she doesn't know Parseltongue at all, Harry argued dryly. Yes, you see, even Harry, who has such a good relationship with the Weasley family, cannot deny that Ginny has no complaints about her parents at home. So I helped her, Riddle continued with a smile, I helped her open the secret room to get rid of the muggles in the school, and the reward she paid was a life. My life was exchanged for my resurrection, more poor girl, she's willing to risk her life just to vent her dissatisfaction. Maybe there are some flaws in this lie, but at least Harry will not be able to hear it, and Harry will take this lie back outside the Chamber of Secrets, and those little flaws will become something that Harry will forget because he is too nervous. Constant little mistakes. Ginny Weasley hated muggles and even opened a secret room to murder her muggle classmates. This would definitely deal a heavy blow to the Weasley family. Dumbledore and the Weasley family have always been close, so Dumbledore will definitely be hampered by the turmoil caused by this incident. This will leave a certain amount of time for Sepples to finish, making him seem cleaner and seemingly not involved in any of these conspiracies. Harry looked like he couldn't think anymore. He put Ginny aside tremblingly, and then took out the Gryffindor sword from behind him, stop talking nonsense here, let Ginny and I go. He didn't believe Riddle's rhetoric. He wanted to take Ginny back to the surface. No matter what happened, no matter how things got to this point, as long as he returned to the surface, Ginny would still be alive. But Riddle shook his head. How could I let you go back? 
You will all stay here and become snacks for the basilisk, put away your toy-like sword. This is the end. In the future, I was accidentally killed by a weakling like you. The poor half-blood is defeated, but now I can't. He took a few steps back slightly and stood in the shadow behind the pillar. Speak to me, Slytherin, the greatest of the Hogwarts Four. He summoned the basilisk. Everything was as Surprius expected. Riddle would not take action himself because of his arrogance. He felt that Harry was not worthy of him doing anything personally. He would only let the basilisk come forward and kill Harry easily. But Harry holds the sword of the founder of Gryffindor. He has a high probability of killing the basilisk. Even if he can't kill it, he can still cause some damage to the basilisk, making it easier for Sepulus to pick it up in the end. It doesn't matter if he really can't be killed. It's the same thing if Sepples can snatch the sword of Gryffindor and pierce the diary. Riddle was still laughing at Harry, now laughing at Harry's embarrassed hiding posture, while Surprius watched from the shadow of the groove. After Harry and the basilisk had completely fought together, he drank another drink. He was wearing gloves and holding a knife that he had sharpened from the table in the Great Hall of Hogwarts. I'm so sorry. Surprius knelt down next to Ginny Weasley. No one noticed Ginny lying alone at the feet of the Slytherin statue. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to kill you. It just happened to be you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Surples murmured a few words, then he took a deep breath and held the sharp knife in his hand. The knife fell straight down, and he stabbed Ginny's throat. The blood spattered so high that it inevitably fell on Surple's body, and it was hot. I'm so sorry, Sepulus muttered again, I'm so sorry. But what was completely different from his words was that the knife in his hand rose and fell again, this time piercing Guinea's heart. Remember to last the last hit. Sepples didn't pull the knife out of Guinea's heart. The knife had no health groove and it was difficult to pull it out after it got stuck. He just left it like this. His hand, a little trembling, probed Guinea's breath. No more, he probably won't survive either. Sepples wiped the blood on his body haphazardly, clean it up. He lowered his head to examine his smooth school uniform, and pinched his arm hard to clear his head that was too nervous and chaotic. He also has no experience in killing people. In the past, he just asked Natasha to bite her and it would be over, but looking at the amount of bleeding, Ginny probably wouldn't survive. I'm so sorry, he murmured again, and then hid in the groove again, staring at the fight between Harry and the basilisk. Harry is very powerful, he is kneeling on the basilisk's head now. The Gryffindor sword is inserted into the basilisk's head. The basilisk is twisting and shaking its body. Harry is working very hard, trying to hold on tight so as not to be thrown off, while Riddle was roaring angrily. Isn't it surprising? Surpris thought calmly, Harry Potter, whom you despised, killed your precious basilisk, but there is something unexpected for you next. Sepples climbed up a stone pillar on the side, raised his wand and pointed it at Harry, stupefied. Harry fell hard. The basilisk also gradually stopped its trembling and became motionless. Riddle's expression was gloomy. Well done, Sepulus. Sepulus slowly climbed down from the stone platform. He walked over to meet Riddle, walked to the side of the basilisk, and finally stopped next to the basilisk's head. Dead, Surples asked softly. Well, Riddle said with a bad expression, it's a waste. No, Sepulus smiled softly, the basilisk is still a very rare magical creature. Many things on it can be used to make medicine, so it is not a waste. He reached out and pulled out the sword of Gryffindor from the basilisk's head, which took some effort. After all, Haliza was quite deep. He jumped up from the stone platform and took a leap of faith to penetrate it. Whatever, you can take it if you want it. Riddle's expression was still bad. He turned his head to see Ginny under the statue, but after taking a few steps, he stopped. What did you do, Sepulus? His voice was very soft, and he turned to look at Sepulus. The chill in his voice made people shudder. I didn't do anything. Sepples pursed his lips and smiled. You killed Ginny Weasley. Riddle raised Harry's wand in his pocket and pointed it at Surprius. Give me a reason not to kill you. Maybe I want you to use Harry's life to achieve your final consciousness. The smile on Surple's face faded a little. Ah, forget it, lying is still very laborious. He smiled again and poked the Gryffindor sword on the ground. Riddle's attention was attracted by his action for a moment, but this moment was enough, 
because the sword was not pierced on the ground, but on the book that Riddle had casually thrown beside Ginny before. In the diary where he lives, Riddle didn't feel that there would be any problems with his plan, nor did he feel that the diary would continue to restrict him in the end, so he did not keep the diary properly. Surpris got it. Riddle's face was distorted, or his whole body began to become distorted. The wand he held still fired a magic spell, a green light. That was Avada Kedavra, and Riddle was dragging Sepular away. C died together. He hit, hitting the ground. Surprius ran away the moment the sword struck. The huge corpse of the basilisk blocked his body, and Riddle could no longer hit him. Why? Riddle's roar was too clear in the empty secret room, why did you do this to me? Serples, we should be a family, how could you choose that good-for-nothing Tom? How could you not choose me? A large amount of ink poured out of the diary, and Riddle's screams gradually faded away. It took a full minute after Riddle's voice disappeared before Serples carefully poked his head out with a little trembling and took a look at the situation outside. Too quiet, Serples swallowed, and then gave Harry another chance to fall unconscious. Then he rushed towards Guinea's body. He knelt down and took out a small bag from his pocket. Small cloth bag. Inside the cloth bag was Natasha, who was still sleeping in hibernation. Sir Prius's hands were shaking a little. He does not desire eternal life. But he couldn't help it. Tom is right, Natasha is just a snake, and a snake's lifespan is limited. Let Sir Pris imagine a future without Natasha. Sir Pris couldn't do it. Living life, ensure its disappearance, split my soul prepared container, ensure its integrity, to hold my desire, spell so that the fairy boat made of dead man's nails can never find me again traces, the undead will never die. Sepples's voice was a little trembling, and the end of it was trembling. Horcrux, Natasha, Nada, Natalia, my, my best girl. You will become my Horcrux and share along an eternal future with me. You have been with me till now, and you must spend time with me in the future. In fact, Everyone's answer is wrong. Salazar Slytherin's purpose of leaving the Chamber of Secrets was not really to let the Basilisk kill all the Muggles in the school. He just left the Chamber of Secrets in the hope that one day he would descendants found this place, found his wealth and his knowledge. The Basilisk is really just his pet. The Basilisk was just a snake. The rooster's crow made him feel scared. Gryffindor's sword was enough to kill it. The prerequisite for launching an attack was that its identity was not discovered. Basilisks are not indestructible. The basilisk couldn't get rid of all the Muggleborns. The one who was really given hope by Salazar Slytherin to eliminate Muggles was the heir who inherited all his knowledge and opened his chamber of secrets. It's people who got it wrong. The spell for making Horcruxes was also a gift left by Salazar Slytherin to his heir. Salazar Slytherin failed to be cruel. He could not fight against his former friends, so in the end he left in anger and never came back but he had high hopes for his descendants. He hopes that one day his family will have an outstanding, ambitious, and power-hungry descendant, a better and more cold-blooded version of himself. Be able to make up your mind to make horcruxes and embrace a long and boundless eternal life. Only such people can inherit his mantle and inherit his unfinished business. A dark green light point flew out from Sepulus's forehead and slowly sank into Natasha's body. Was this a success? Not really sure. After all, Sepples didn't have a teacher to guide him, and all his understanding and production of horcruxes came from Tom. In order to avoid Riddle, he couldn't show any desire for making horcruxes. That would make Riddle feeling dangerous, feeling that he is uncontrollable and bringing variables to the plan. I can't care so much anymore. Surpris stuffed Natasha back into his arms, and then turned to the room behind the secret room. Tom's ceremony was almost completed. He looked more solid, and the shadow cast by the light could already be seen. How's it going? Serples asked him standing at the door. It's almost enough, enough for me to get out of the diary, how about Natasha? Tom nodded towards Sepulus. Everything goes well, I hope it goes well. Serples breathed out briefly, are you okay too? I'm fine, Tom said softly. Unlike Riddle's high needs, Tom's needs were unexpectedly low, so low that Lockhart could support the completion of the ritual without dying. It was Riddle's intention. During this period of getting along, Tom discovered that Riddle did not tell him the complete conversion method at all. He deliberately omitted some parts. He just wanted Tom to be incomplete and unable to use magic. 
he was trying to steal Sepulus's gaze away from Tom. Chapter 91 This is a magical world, and Riddle wants to make Sepples realize that Tom, who does not have magic, cannot do anything and cannot provide any help to Sepples. He wants Serples to give up Tom. The essence of Riddle and Tom is the same. They hate love but also long for love, so Riddle is obviously jealous and hostile towards Tom. Why are we all the same bad breed? But you have Serples who is willing to treat you well. I am obviously so much better than you, why is Serples still looking at you and not looking at me? Then I want you to fall into the dust, so that Sepulus will be kind to me. A simple and straightforward fight. I am better, so I should be the one who gets love. For Riddle, Sepulus is a concrete embodiment of love. He wants to compete for this love. Tom looked at Serples's back. He was placing Lockhart near Guinea's body according to his original plan. He wouldn't tell Serpres about it. He didn't have Riddle's ability to modify the incomplete sacrifice spell that he had obtained, so he told Sepulus that this was a foregone conclusion. He would not give Sepulus a chance to regret, to regret that, you could have used magic. In this way, if he can gain the ability to use magic in the future, it will be a surprise for Serpres, rather than a belated end. The whole story will be disguised as Ginny hating muggles for being bewitched by the diary to open the Chamber of Secrets and attack the students in the school, and even plan to sacrifice herself to resurrect Riddle in the diary, while Lockhart originally came to try to crack the secret of the Chamber of Secrets, and some of the material was used as the creative content of the next book, but due to the emergency, Ginny had to be hastily killed with a table knife to prevent the sacrifice. After he personally killed his student, he couldn't accept it and finally chose to commit suicide. An Avada Kedavra took his own life. All the spells were cast by Lockhart's own wand, including the initial spell that exploded the wall of the pipe to separate him from Harry, so the wand's traceback in subsequent evidence collection also sounded reasonable. Lockhart did it all. And Lockhart must die. Serples also thought about whether to use a forgetting spell to erase all Lockhart's memories, but only the dead can keep secrets to the greatest extent. He could not take the risk of Lockhart's memories being restored by Dumbledore. His life. We can only let him sleep in the secret room forever. Hasn't he been chasing fame and fortune all his life? Died in Salazar Slytherin's Chamber of Secrets, destroying the mysterious man's evil conspiracy. For such a grand curtain call, he should be grateful to Sepulus. Although there are still some imperfections, Sepulus feels that he has tried his best. He is so young and has done so much, he is already very powerful, okay. Everyone should praise him for his ability. The last Avada Kedavra was actually not very powerful, and it was not at the same level of lethality as what Riddle finally displayed, but it was enough to kill Lockhart, who was still breathing. How old am I? Sepulus comforted himself. It's normal that my magic power is not strong enough. I can use Avada and I'm already pretty good, okay. After hurriedly setting up the scene, and taking a final quick look to make sure there were no major problems, Serples and Tom ran along the water pipe in the mouth of the Salazar Slytherin statue where the basilisk usually lived. Arriving at the Forbidden Forest, Sepples did not take Tom and Tom's sheltered diary back to the dormitory. He left the diary with Tom and left Tom in the Forbidden Forest. He wasn't sure if Dumbledore would trust him, and he wasn't sure if Dumbledore would go to his dormitory again to conduct a sweep, so let Tom hide in the Forbidden Forest for the time being. Now that he has an entity, he can also go back to the diary to avoid trouble. He can find a safer place in the Forbidden Forest to stay for a few days. When everything calms down, Sepulus will turn around and take him away. Sir Prius drank the last few invisibility potions and quickly returned to the dormitory, his heart beating rapidly. He went back to bed and lay down for a while, trying to fall asleep, but couldn't. Guinea's warm and cold blood seemed not to have been wiped away at all, and Lockhart's pale and expressionless face was so clearly reflected in Seppel's mind. The unconscious Harry, the huge corpse of the basilisk, and the angry roaring Riddle's voice. He took a few more deep breaths, but the picture in his mind was too clear and he couldn't sleep. After tossing and turning for a long time, he finally got up, crossed the fireplace and reached Wolf's dormitory across the distance between the two schools. It was already very late at this time, around two o'clock in the morning, when everyone should be asleep, and Wolf was no exception. He was sleeping soundly on the bed in the dormitory, but he still stepped out of the fireplace for the first time in circles. He stood up for a moment. Sepris, 
Wolf was not completely awake, and was still slightly hoarse from being temporarily awakened. It's me, Surpris quietly approached Wolf's bedside. I couldn't sleep, so I wanted to come over and have a look, I didn't choose the time well and disturbed your sleep. He knelt beside Wolf's bed and knelt on the carpet, his voice low. You sleep in your own bed, Serple said softly, I'm just coming over to sleep for a while. I'll go to the sofa to sleep for a while. He didn't plan to sleep, but he really couldn't sleep. He might as well sit on the sofa here and read a book until dawn, and then take two sobering potions during the day to refresh his mind. Tom was right, he did feel more at ease with Wolf. After the face-to-face -face communication between Pansy and Otis, the ring, the winery, and the portrait Wolf gave to Surpris this Christmas, through these things, Surpris can for sure, Wolf likes him. Although Surple still doesn't understand why Wolf likes him. He looked back at the past between himself and Wolf from the day they first met, and after thinking about it, he still couldn't figure it out. But in many of the books and novels about love that he has read, they sometimes describe love as something that is a little unreasonable, the kind that suddenly appears, then stretches out a foot and kicks you, and with a plop, you are kicked in, love river. Can't climb up anymore. This kind of love between lovers is not unreasonable at all. That doesn't make sense. Surpris gave up. It still takes a long time, right? He can learn more about it and learn more slowly. He was grateful that Wolf didn't push him to realize it immediately or make a statement, which Seppler's thought was good. And it may be that Serple's reacted too much to the ring and the winery that Wolf gave him. Wolf was afraid that Serple's would be under pressure, so this year's Christmas gift was changed to a portrait, a portrait of Wolf. Oil painting painted by Wolf himself. It's not a very expensive thing, but it's worth it. This made Seppels feel at ease, and he also felt a strange emotion rising from the bottom of his heart. The painting is of Seppels, who is wrapped in Wolf's cloak, with his scarf and hat tightly covered, leaving only half of his face exposed. You have to hold the hat with one hand to fully expose your eyes. The lower half of your face is shrunk in the scarf. The whole person looks warm and cozy. Behind you is the winter day of Durmstrang, forest. Sir Prius remembers this day. On this day, he looked to Wolf with doubts for an answer that he didn't know what response he wanted to hear. Wolf told him that human life is so short and he should do what he wants to do. The sun was very bright that day, the clouds in the sky were very beautiful, the birds flying overhead were very beautiful, and the wolf in front of me was smiling, which was also very beautiful. Sir Prius smiled at Wolf stood up and prepared to go to the sofa for a while, but as soon as he stood up and turned around, he was picked up by a force behind him and carried to the bed. The quilt was wrapped tightly. Wolf seemed to sigh, then wrapped Sepulus more tightly with the quilt, and then got out of bed. What do you mean by going to the sofa? Wolf's voice was already sober, and Jean carefully buried circles completely under the quilt, turning him into a dumpling sitting on the bed with only his head exposed. He looked like sitting on the bed like a pudding. Wolf got out of bed in his pajamas. Pajamas are not very thick, and the heating in Durmstrang is really good, so the collar of Wolf's pajamas is not buttoned, but half open, exposing a large part of his chest. For no reason, Surprius's mind recalled the photos of Wolf in the album Otis gave him. Surprius thought his face might be starting to turn red. Wolf just looked at Surplus's expression as he looked up at him blankly raised his hand with obvious hesitation, and then gently pinched Serpulus's cheek. The movement was so gentle that Sepulus felt as if a feather fell on his face. There's no need to be so cautious. Surprius suddenly thought. We had fought in a duel before, and I'm not a very fragile person. But Wolf immediately withdrew his hand after this slight touch, without any further physical contact. I'm going to run some water. If you can't sleep, it will be more comfortable to take a hot bath. After Wolf finished speaking, he turned and entered the bathroom. Sepulus sat on the bed blankly, blinking, silently tucking himself a little tighter with the quilt. The heartbeat stabilized. Sepulus placed his hand on his heart and breathed out slowly. That night he slept in Wolf's bed, surprisingly soundly, without any nightmares. When Wolf got up to go to class the next morning, he was very careful not to disturb Serples, who slept until noon before getting up. Wolf had not returned to the dormitory at this time. Serples thought about leaving a note on the desk for Wolf to tell him that he was leaving first, and saw a copy of the thermal insulation spell on Wolf's desk. There was breakfast on the table, and a note left by Wolf. 
My dear, you looked very tired, so I didn't wake you up. Breakfast is on the table. I might not be able to go back until very late. Looking forward to meeting you next time. Yours, Wolf. The few words were very simple and clear. Sepulus reached out and touched the pancake on the dinner plate. It was still warm, and the maple syrup on the side was even warm. Sir Prius felt his face getting a little hot again. After having breakfast, he returned to the Slytherin common room. To Serple's surprise, there was a note on his desk. It was Dumbledore's message. The note told Serple's to remember to go to his office when he returned to his dormitory. Sepples had a bad intuition. Did you fail to handle something that Dumbledore discovered? No, no, you can't think like that. Sir Prius pinched his arm hard again and took a deep breath. It cannot be regarded as having been discovered. When you pretend to be stupid, you must do it thoroughly. He exhaled, stood up suddenly, took the note and knocked on Draco's door next door. Draco quickly opened the door. Sepris, Draco was a little surprised by Sepris's visit. Sir Prius shook the note in his hand towards Draco. Mr. Dumbledore called me to his principal's office, but I don't know what Mr. Dumbledore wants to say to me. Can you accompany me? Shall I go with you? Draco said, Ah, okay, I'll go with you. For safety reasons, Sepples went to meet Professor Snape with Draco. This makes sense, right? Isn't Hogwarts unsafe? Isn't there the air of Salazar Slytherin wandering around with monsters? Sepulus didn't know that the danger had been lifted, and he was a little scared. Please teach me to act together and be reasonable. And this is also a recent request, isn't it? It is best for students not to leave the lounge alone. They cannot act without authorization in Hogwarts without the guidance of professors. Professor Snape remained expressionless as usual, but he would not refuse his students. He nodded and took the two children to Principal Dumbledore's office. Came here for the third time. Serples looked at the brass statue in front of him, thinking that they had met again. Dumbledore's voice came from the spiral staircase. Mr. Malfoy, please wait outside the door for a moment. Severus, please come up with Sepulus. Professor Snape frowned. It's not safe outside. It will be okay, Severus, trust me. Dumbledore's voice was sure and powerful. Severus's heart skipped a beat, thinking that he must have known what happened in the Chamber of Secrets. Professor Snape still frowned, and the corners of his mouth lowered a little for unknown reasons. Then he took out his wand and left a completely protective cover around Draco, and then walked in with Sepulus. Dumbledore's office. Dumbledore sat behind his desk with a calm and serene face, and together with the countless portraits on the wall, quietly watched Professor Snape take Sepples up the stairs. Serples was a little nervous. He shrank slightly behind Professor Snape and said, Look for me, Mr. Dumbledore. I went to your dormitory, but you were not there, Dumbledore's expression remained calm, where have you been? Sir Pris blinked. I went to Bull's, I went to Bulwer Wolf's dormitory. Why go there? The day before, the night before the course was cancelled, I had memorized a lot of books for the history of magic exam, and I was a little sleepy, so the course was cancelled and there was no exam, so I went back to the dormitory to sleep. Sir Pris said cautiously, I went to bed early and woke up early. I couldn't fall asleep in the middle of the night. I felt bored, so I went to find Bull. He nervously grasped the corner of his clothes. What, what's wrong, Professor? Dumbledore shook his head. Just a few questions, do you remember what time you went? What time did you go? Sepples's palms began to sweat. Just like when he lied to deceive the orphanage's mother-in-law, what remained the same was that the lies he spoke were all well-thought-out lies, but what changed was that Dumbledore was a thousand times smarter than the disciplinary mammy, I don't remember clearly, it was night, the clock in my dormitory broke and I didn't have time to report it for repair, and the new alarm clock I bought was still on the way, I don't know what time it is, but it's still dark. It's still dark, Dumbledore repeated. Did you go anywhere else last night? Serples. Me, I didn't. Sepulus shook his head blankly, looked at Dumbledore in front of him, and then at Professor Snape beside him, what's wrong, Professor? Something happened last night. A lot of things, Dumbledore said softly, a lot of big things. I don't understand what your many important matters have to do with my students, Mr. Snape interjected coldly, if you just want to ask these questions, then I will take Sepulus away now, de Rico is still waiting for us outside the door. I said don't worry, Severus, there will be no more attacks. 
Dumbledore tried to persuade Professor Snape, but his eyes fell on Severus' face. What do you mean? Professor Snape frowned even more. Last night, in the Chamber of Secrets, everything ended. A student and a professor died, the basilisk was not alive, and a diary containing Voldemort's soul was destroyed. Dumbledore's voice was soft. S, there will be no more attacks, never again. Ginny Weasley, Professor Snape's eyes widened slightly, who else? Gilderoy Lockhart, Dumbledore said softly, I searched his office and it seems that he really wanted to rescue Miss Weasley and went to the Chamber of Secrets. He, Professor Snape only responded with a single syllable, completely incredulous. He left a letter. Dumbledore nodded towards Professor Snape, I read the letter, and it seems to explain what happened, and it is reasonable, but I always feel that things are not so simple, after all, letters can be forged. Mr. Snape raised an eyebrow. Don't tell me you suspect one of my students, Dumbledore. Why wouldn't I? Dumbledore smiled at Professor Snape, of course I can doubt him. He is only 12 years old. Professor Snape's voice was a little stern. Sepples looked confused, and then a little panicked due to too much shock, what? No, I didn't do anything. But now Professor Snape and Principal Dumbledore can't hear him very well. A gifted person is never constrained by age. Severus, Dumbledore, think of Gellert Grindelwald, think of Tom Riddle. Professor Snape was silent for a moment. But it was only for a moment, and he still stood in front of Sepulus, you have to produce evidence. Dumbledore smiled softly, I have no evidence. As soon as these words came out, Professor Snape's face darkened. He grabbed Sepulus's wrist and quickly led him away from here. But I still doubt him, Severus, Dumbledore's voice also deepened, I can give Severus a chance to prove his innocence. Professor Snape just paused and turned to look at Dumbledore, what? Veritaserum, Dumbledore tapped the bottle on his desk with his finger. The only thing I can be reasonably sure about is that a 12-year-old child cannot survive the effects of Veritaserum. If he drinks vomit the real agent can also prove his innocence, so I believe in his innocence. Sir Prius's eyes widened. Veritaserum, what a famous torture potion. But for yourself, Dumbledore is crazy. Professor Snape's reaction was the same as that of Serple's. He also thought Dumbledore was crazy. It is illegal to use Veritaserum privately, Dumbledore, Professor Snape's voice seemed to be squeezed out from between his teeth. Using Veritaserum on students, you are really crazy. I don't think so, Dumbledore's voice was still calm, it's just Veritaserum. If Sepulus didn't lie, then nothing would happen to him. What are you talking about? Professor Snape's voice contained great anger. That's Veritaserum, do you think it's a drink on a buffet? Veritaserum, if we insist on interpreting it in a popular and literal sense, is a strong hallucinogenic drug. Among them, the feathers of the silent bird will cause people with evil intentions and attempts to lie to feel extreme fear and incomparable pain. Even those who have not lied or concealed anything will feel extremely uncomfortable, and those with severe rejection may even need to be treated in the hospital for a long period of time. Therefore, the Ministry of Magic has absolutely strict restrictions on the use of Veritaserum. Although there are some strong-willed people who can resist the effects of Veritaserum and are determined not to be fooled by its effects, Sepples is still a student. Giving truth serum to students. It's really a punishment. Sepples' hands were trembling a little as he pinched the corners of his clothes, thinking it was over. Draco was right, Dumbledore might not really be a good person. Who is a good person who gives truth serum to students? Sir Prius had thought about what Dumbledore would do after many mistakes were exposed, but he was quite confident in himself and felt that nothing would go wrong and leave a clue. But Serples didn't expect Dumbledore to be so violent. Even if there was no evidence, Dumbledore suspected that there was something wrong with Serples. And looking at the Veritaserum prepared on the table, Sir Prius pursed his lips. If he hadn't asked Professor Snape to come with him, he would probably have been forced to drink the Veritaserum by Dumbledore. It's too much. Serples felt as if he had gotten to know Dumbledore all over again. And he was really unsure. Can I survive the Veritaserum? What should I do if I can't hold on and tell the truth? What should Tom do? What about Natasha? Sepulus looked tense, nervously watching Professor Snape's reaction. He definitely couldn't resist Dumbledore's request, and there wasn't much room for resistance. The only person present who could compete with Dumbledore was Professor Snape. 
If Professor Snape was willing to protect him, he probably wouldn't have to drink that veritaserum. Thinking of this, Sepulus looked at Professor Snape with even more pitiful, innocent and miserable eyes, Professor. Professor Snape's lips tightened, and he looked at Dumbledore, who had a calm face, do you have to go to this point? I think this is within a reasonable and acceptable range, Dumbledore remained calm and unfazed. If you want to gain trust, you must pay a price. I think you know this very well, Severus. He is the student you brought back. Danger needs to be nipped in the bud. Dumbledore's answer was not at all soft-hearted. Sepulus looked at Professor Snape's profile carefully. Will Professor Snape protect him? Not really sure. So what do you do? How do you prevent yourself from drinking Veritaserum? Knocking yourself out? Not quite, it's a bit too obvious to explain. If Dumbledore hadn't given him trust from the beginning, this would be terrible. Sepples's heart turned over and over again, but he still couldn't think of any way to break the situation. Still too bad, Sir Prius hated the feeling of being at the mercy of others. After Professor Snape's long silence, he still held Sepulus's wrist. I said no, Professor Snape blocked circles behind him. He looked at Dumbledore, his whole person showing an irrefutable determination. Dumbledore, I am not you, Professor Snape's voice was not loud, but his determination was not compromised by this, you are becoming more and more like Grindelwald. Dumbledore's response was silence. Sepulus is my student, and you know my reputation. I have always been protective of shortcomings. If you don't have conclusive evidence, I won't let you do anything to my students. Professor Snape said. I am his guardian, Dumbledore said very slowly, I have the right. Do you have the right to know the law and break it? Professor Snape did not give in. Then as Sepulus's father, Grindelwald also needs to know about this, will he agree? You use Veritaserum on his child. Quote, Professor Snape and the first-generation Dark Lord Grindelwald actually have nothing in common. They have completely different origins, appearance, and experiences, but the only thing they have in common is that they both guard their shortcomings. There was a stalemate for a while. What broke the awkward atmosphere was that the revolving door under the stairs opened again, and Mr. Lucius Malfoy strode in, followed by Draco. Mr. Lucius Malfoy had an arrogant and weird smile on his face. He strode into the office and looked past everyone at Dumbledore. Hey, Dumbledore, are you busy? Lucius Malfoy's smile was playful, I heard that something big happened in the school. This has nothing to do with you, Lucius. Dumbledore's voice was very calm. Doesn't it matter? I don't think that as the school director of Hogwarts, I need to know everything that happens in the school and be responsible for the students in the school. It's hard to tell how sincere Mr. Lucius Malfoy's words are, but it is obvious that Mr. Lucius Malfoy's words clearly reveal evil intentions. I heard that the little girl from the Weasley family did some extraordinary things. Dumbledore, aren't you going to explain? Dumbledore looked deeply into Lucius Malfoy's face, and finally he averted his gaze. Severus, take the students and leave first. We will talk about this later. Mr. Snape snorted and did not look at Dumbledore again. However, he nodded slightly to Lucius Malfoy as a greeting, then turned around and dragged Sepulus away, taking him away. Draco. The strength of his hand made Sepulus feel as if he had been pinched by a fire crab. He dragged Sepples and Draco out of Dumbledore's office together. Draco was still there watching the excitement and watching what his father said about Dumbledore's unhappy expression, but he was directly beaten by his godfather. He was dragged away more or less annoyed that he had not seen enough of the excitement, but in the next second, his godfather thrust Sepulus into his hand. Draco, Sepulus, Professor Snape's expression remained calm, watch him and avoid causing trouble. Then he left, gone, gone, really gone, Draco had a blank look of confusion on his face. What's going on? Draco's expression was a bit stiff and complicated, what were you talking about with Dumbledore upstairs? Nothing to talk about. Sepulus blinked, hesitating for a moment between backstabbing Dumbledore and not backstabbing Dumbledore, and finally decided not to speak out. Because he was not sure if Grindelwald would turn to him instead of Dumbledore if things really got serious. The most solid backing that Sepples can name now, and the prerequisite for him to be able to gather people around him, is actually Grindelwald. Without Grindelwald, Aunt Rosier would not look down upon him, and Otis would not look down upon him either. Won't come here. 
Although it is destined to not be as important as Dumbledore in Grindelwald's heart, it is not necessarily impossible to struggle a little. It may be possible to exchange some insinuations for Grindelwald's soft-heartedness. After all, Sepples has also seen it. Grindelwald is a very protective person. Draco looked at Serples's expression carefully and saw that Serples was indeed fine, so he stopped worrying about it. Let's go back to the lounge, I really hope there are no final exams this year. Draco followed the action of holding Sepples just now and turned Sepples around, then pulled him Sepples' hand led Sepples back towards the Slytherin common room. Maybe there really won't be a final exam. Serples laughed, thinking that with so many things happening recently, Dumbledore might not have the heart to organize this final exam, but he was stunned. Suddenly I thought of something again, as the mandrake about to mature. It should be during this period of time. Draco thought for a moment, it was supposed to be mature last week, but it turned out that someone added something to the mandrake fertilizer. As a result, the mandrake never left the soil, making Professor Sprout very angry, but it will mature, and everyone will know what is in the secret room. Yes, it will probably be over soon, Serpolis nodded, let's pray that our vacation will arrive soon. Serpreus hugged his knees in the dormitory and looked at Natasha, who was hibernating soundly in the snake's nest. Finally, he sighed and wrote to Otis. He and Otis ask for Veritaserum. This thing is strictly controlled, and it is difficult for Sepples to get it himself. Although whether it is Draco or Wolf, as long as Sepples asks, he will definitely find it for Sepples. But Draco will most likely ask Sepulus what he wants this for, and Wolf may see more, which he can't explain. And there is also the risk of being traced in the future. If you ask for it from Otis, you will save yourself all these troubles, because Otis is really a well-rounded person who knows what to do and what not to do, has a sense of proportion, and knows what to have and what not to have, so there is no need for Sep no matter what Lesduo said, he knew that he would take the initiative to think and do things. Although such an approach may sometimes be considered as overstepping by some superiors, for today's Serpolis, it can be called a surprise. Serpils needs the help of such a sensible and experienced person. After all, he is still immature and cannot do some things very, very well. But he also has his advantages. He can be ruthless to those around him for his own goals, and he can be generous to himself. Just like now, he is holding the bottle of Veritaserum and looking at the disapproval in front of him. Natasha was so angry that she woke her up and poured herself truth serum. Veritaserum can really cause tremendous pain. But the pain is not completely unbearable. It seems that there are indeed some people who can survive the effects of Veritaserum with their strong will, so Veritaserum cannot be a 100% successful torture potion. So the most powerful thing is actually people. People will do anything for their own desires, and they will endure everything firmly for their own desires. Sepples felt as if his soul had floated up alone, suspended in midair, and looked coldly and indifferently at his body, curled up in a ball and shaking on the carpet due to pain. Natasha didn't understand why Serples wanted to make trouble for herself, but she obediently followed Serples' request and asked him questions, asking him whether he had anything to do with the Chamber of Secrets, and asking him about his relationship with Tom Riddle. Have you socialized and asked him if he knows anything about the recent events in Hogwarts? Sir Prius thought numbly in pain. Then little by little, he discovered that there was a loophole in the Veritaserum that he could exploit. For example, he can say that the Chamber of Secrets has nothing to do with him. As long as he firmly says that the Chamber of Secrets was built by Salazar Slytherin and has nothing to do with him, then this statement will be true and the efficacy of Veritaserum will not be affected. Make him so sad. It can also help him share some of the pain he needs to endure. But if the problem is too direct and sharp, it will be difficult to adjust through this loophole method. For example, Sepulus asked Natasha to ask him if he killed Ginny Weasley. It was indeed him who killed him, or he did it himself. This left him no room to take advantage of any loopholes. He could only resist the desire to tell the truth, and then lie and lie cruelly. But what surprised Serpres was that it was not as unbearable as he imagined. Although the pain was excruciating, he could actually separate a part of his brain that was very clear. Serpreus attributed this to the splitting off of a small part of his soul. The splitting of the soul is an evil thing, and evil cannot be accepted at all, because it will make people incomplete but the specific place where they become incomplete is not written in the book, and Sepples does not have no idea. 
Maybe it will make you more tolerant. Sir Prius thought blankly. But he soon realized that what he had lost was not his endurance, but his empathy. What happened in the Chamber of Secrets was not a secret that could be hidden. In the end, the story was in the form of a report. After the Mandrake matured and all the people who had been attacked were successfully discharged from the hospital wing, Dumbledore received an interview with the Daily Prophet. The overall story is not very different from what Serples imagined, but it focuses on Riddle's diary and exaggerates the danger of the diary. Dumbledore tells everyone that it was the remnant soul of Voldemort that influenced the story. Ginny, manipulated Ginny to cause these things to happen. Harry Potter showed extraordinary talent and intelligence because he was worried about his classmates. He finally found the location of the Chamber of Secrets and almost foiled Voldemort's conspiracy. However, because he was too young, he was injured while fighting the Basilisk. Mr. Lockhart, the professor of defense against the dark arts at Hogwarts who fell into a coma and followed him because he was worried about his students, unfortunately died in order to protect the students. Ginny also unfortunately stayed in the secret room forever because she failed to rescue her. There was an uproar. Numerous horror teams and Ministry of Magic investigation teams came to Hogwarts to investigate. As Serples expected, even Dumbledore explained Ginny Weasley to everyone by saying that he was confused by the diary, reasons for their actions, but many people still began to wonder whether the Weasley family was not as happy as they showed. Sir Prius once saw Mr. and Mrs. Weasley coming to take away Ginny Weasley's body from a distance through the window of the castle. Their two sons, Charlie and Bill, who were working outside, had even returned, and picked up the body of their little sister together. Serples just watched from a distance, watching Mrs. Weasley crying heartbrokenly and falling into Mr. Weasley's arms. Serples felt no emotion at all. And he didn't think anything was wrong at first. Until he heard Blaze lamenting that the Weasley family was also pitiful. He heard that Mrs. Weasley was so heartbroken that she fainted from crying several times in Dumbledore's principal's office. She was really pitiful. Everyone around them acknowledged this, and even Draco, who had always had a bad relationship with the Weasley family, nodded in approval. It didn't matter what Ginny Weasley did, but poor Mrs. Weasley Sharp. Only then did Serples realize that something was wrong, because he had no regrets or sympathy for Mrs. Weasley's crying and sadness. It was clear that Mrs. Weasley was very good to him during the short week he lived at the borough, and his relationship with Ginny Weasley can also be said to be harmonious, and he and Ginny went to the garden to catch goblins together. Sepulus pursed his lips, but just as Serples expected, Dumbledore was too busy to attack Serples again. This tranquility that Serples once thought was the calm before the storm actually lasted until the end of the entire semester. Les remained silent as he boarded the express leaving Hogwarts. Sir Prius returned to Nurmengard, with Tom and Natasha. Grindelwald still looks the same, and Serpris has more to say this time and wants to seek some answers from him. Even though he had realized that Grindelwald would definitely choose Dumbledore between him and Dumbledore, he still wanted to seek some answers from Grindelwald. Father, Sir Prius took two bottles of wine to the door of Grindelwald's cell. As a prisoner, Grindelwald would not walk out of the Iron Gate. Although Serples was very sure that the Iron Gate was not something that could trap him at all. He just I simply don't want to walk out of this door that is in name only. What kind of wine? Grindelwald did not refuse Sepulus's courtesy. He looked at the two bottles of wine twice with his critical eyes, and finally raised his eyebrows as if he suddenly understood, oh, your little friend gave it to you. Produced at your winery. That's not possible. I bought it specially. I don't know how the wine in that winery is, so how can I use it to show hospitality? Surpris touched the tip of his nose, coughed, and moved the wine glass in his hand. He handed it over the railing and said, come on, dad, you drink, you drink. Grindelwald criticized Serpolis's wine, and then chose to blow his beard and glare after knowing that Serples refused to drink with him. Drink, why not drink? I'm going to be drunk, Dad, Serpolis held his bottle of pumpkin juice pitifully, I'm really drunk. When I'm drunk, I'll be stupid. If I accidentally fall down from this step, you I don't have a son anymore, Dad. Grindelwald's expression showed a hint of disgust. Take a rope and tie one side to yourself and the other to the iron railing. Tie it tighter. If you fall, tie it in the air. Wait until you wake up. Just climb up on your own. Surprise. Dad, do you want to listen to what you are saying? 
but in the end, he still couldn't withstand Grindelwald's persuasion, so he still took a cup and poured himself a cup. It's really drunk, Sepulus sighed, really, dad. Grindelwald snorted. Tell me what's going on, you brat has an idea. If it's nothing important, you won't come here to find me. What's the matter, you're really screwing up. Broken. Sepulus raised his hand and wiped the non-existent sweat on his head. No, it's not that bad. I don't have the ability yet, dad. I just came here to have a chat, dad. Grindelwald laughed. Do I believe it? Why don't you just believe it a little bit? Sepulus blinked and then touched his nose with a playful expression on Grindelwald, okay, I also know that what I said is nothing. It's persuasive, but we are just chatting, just chatting. In the end, he was defeated under Grindelwald's gaze. Hey, I just want the atmosphere to be less serious, Dad, let me tell you how embarrassing it is. Grindelwald smiled and filled up Sepulus's glass, then raised his own glass, drink, have a drink and ask a question. Sepulus shrank his neck and started to act coquettishly in his soft voice, this is really not okay, dad. I'm so drunk that I don't know how to ask questions. Thank you to me. Grindelwald still laughed at him. Okay, I'll let you go this time. If you have anything to say, just ask. Surpris took a sip from the bottom of his glass, then blinked, dad, do you know Tom Riddle? Grindelwald looked a little confused, what the hell? Ah, he later named himself Voldemort. Serples explained immediately. Grindelwald suddenly realized. Oh, that boy is quite worthless. Another question mark popped up on Serples' head. What? It's quite tasteless, Grindelwald commented seriously. The aesthetics are a mess. Look at the saints who were your father's and mine's followers back then. Everyone has great aesthetics. From their appearance to their clothes, everything is pleasing to the eye. And what about his gang of Death Eaters? They look all kinds of weird, not to mention, but they are all uniformed in a black robe, which is very uncomfortable, and they also wear a hideous mask, it's really ugly. Grindelwald actually said such a long list of words. Sir Prius looked at Grindelwald's serious expression and felt a little disillusioned with life. What, what are these? He took a moment to turn his head around. Just, what about other aspects? For example, about his behavior or the things he did. Grindelwald said, oh, what do you mean? There is nothing to comment on. That boy is too arrogant. He thinks that he is the most noble in the world and implements a reign of terror. He will definitely not live long, even if it is not him. Even if you do something wrong to yourself, someone will definitely deal with him. But Mr. Dumbledore seems to care. Surpris said carefully. He did not expect that Grindelwald had such a low opinion of Riddle. He is always worried. Grindelwald's expression darkened. He always feels that he is responsible for everyone around him. He always feels that everything about the people around him has something to do with him, including that boy Voldemort. He thought it was his own problem to commit random murders and carry out a reign of terror, because that kid was once his student, he was exhausted from living anyway. Quote, Does father disapprove of Mr. Dumbledore's actions? Serples continued to ask cautiously. I can't say that I disagree. His and I have different thinking directions. After experiencing some things, he always felt that everything should be controlled within his own capabilities. He felt that everything around him was acceptable. Controlling people and good deeds, to be honest, how can this not be another kind of tyranny, right? Sepples didn't want to accept this. But he hesitated for a moment and said vaguely, Hum, does father think what Mr. Dumbledore did is wrong? If I think he's wrong, that's not true. Grindelwald thought carefully, it's a different way. At most, I don't agree with it, because people are very magical things, and complete control is very difficult. It's difficult to do, but he may listen to you, but there must be a reason, because of your power, ability, wealth, whatever, even if you successfully brainwash him, if you can, others can, too, and you can do both kindness and power. It's too hard to completely gain his loyalty. Al said he didn't want to use this method, the white wizard, I can't convince him. Seppel said softly, ah, that's it, blinded control will bring about resistance, but it will also bring about some bad effects, I think it is better to block than to block. Grindelwald concluded in the end. Sepulus nodded. After just a moment of silence, Sepulus spoke again, does father know why Mr. Dumbledore adopted me? I don't know, 
Grindelwald replied calmly, but there must be a reason why he adopted you. He doesn't do business at a loss. I always thought that he would make a lot of money if he did business. It's a pity. He refused. Surpris was a little stunned. Well, father, you don't even know why Mr. Dumbledore adopted me. I wanted to recognize you as my father, and you just agreed so obediently. Is that what I agreed to? Grindelwald grabbed a grape in front of him and threw it into Surpris' face. I'm just saying, who would have thought that you would just climb up the pole? I didn't expect such shameless energy. You are so young and can be so flexible. The grapes were not thrown to Sepulus, and Grindelwald himself grabbed another one and ate it. No matter why Al brought you back, you were brought back by Al after all. He brought you to me himself. I can't let him down. Surprius silently wiped the grape that Grindelwald threw over with his sleeve and stuffed it into his mouth. You really, really love you. Because I have some relationship with that Voldemort who doesn't have very good aesthetics, Surpris said with a slightly complicated mood. Although I'm not sure how much relationship I have with that Voldemort, there is still a relationship. Surprius considered it carefully and slowly told Grindelwald about everything, from Quirrell in the first grade to the Chamber of Secrets in the second grade, to the recent matter of Dumbledore giving him Veritaserum. Everything that can be said must be said, and what cannot be said has been artificially hidden with lies. Serples worked hard to restore every detail, and Grindelwald listened very patiently. He could calmly take a sip of wine when Serple stopped to organize his words. After Surprius finished speaking, Grindelwald put down the wine glass, Are you done? Sepulus nodded, I remember you were a Slytherin student. Right, Slytherin's house common room appears to be at the bottom of a lake. Right, how do you know it's not dark yet? Because, Serples recalled Dumbledore's thinking expression after he finished speaking, and immediately wanted to slap himself, I think the lake is still very dark. Perhaps, Grindelwald nodded casually, I have never actually been to your underwater lounge in Hogwarts, and I don't care if you were involved in this secret room or not. After all, Dumbledore didn't find any evidence and came up with the idea of giving you Veritaserum, so you should have handled it well. Sepulus didn't say anything, he just lowered his eyes his gaze falling on the wine in the glass that was as red as blood. Of course you can cause some trouble for Al. After all, I sometimes suffer from his stubbornness, Grindelwald looked at Sepulus, do I look like a very pedantic feudal patriarch? I am very proud to have a capable son, okay. Surprius still didn't speak. He looked at Grindelwald and evaluated in his heart how credible Grindelwald's words were. We back then, Al and I, were probably not very mature in what we did. From Godric's Hollow back then, to having a fight in the UK and then finally arriving in Nurmengard, we were both immature and not mature enough. From beginning to end, he failed to convince the other party. Grindelwald's eyes crossed Surprius's shoulder and fell outside the iron fence of Nurmengard that restricted his freedom. I have an unshirkable responsibility for him becoming what he is now. Maybe it's because of the alcohol, or maybe it's because the past stories have been buried in the dust for so long that the dim clouds of Nurmengard can no longer be penetrated by Godric's summer sunshine. Grindelwald feels that he has returned to that time after a long absence. He was just a reckless boy, and in that summer when the roses were in full bloom, he delivered all the sincerity that he had never imagined. Just think of it as me making the final remedy, Sepulus. Gellert Grindelwald's voice was rare and gentle, I want to prove something to him, to prove that we are all old men and that the world can don't worry, leave it to the young people, even if the sky is broken, what does it matter? It has nothing to do with old men like us. Quote. Sepulus said, Ha, father, you are not old. There's no need to continue talking nonsense at this time. Grindelwald laughed out loud, anyway, you can just do whatever you want to do. Just be careful in front of Al and don't embarrass yourself and don't embarrass him. You can contact me for technical support. I won't help you with anything extra. If Al knew about it, he would easily quarrel with me. Surpris had mixed feelings. Are you still afraid of quarreling after all this? It would be quite embarrassing for you two to meet each other, right? However, Sepples would definitely not say such unlucky words. He did not answer Grindelwald's words. He just laughed and then suddenly remembered something. Oh, yes, this year's Halloween at that time, Mr. Dumbledore invited a skeleton dance troupe to perform. I didn't see it at the time, but my classmates said it was very good. I thought that I would invite you to watch it with Dad, 
Dad, are you interested? You're quite cautious. Grindelwald looked at Seppel's pretending to be stupid and smiled again, please come and have a look. Dumbledore's invitation will definitely make it difficult to see what's wrong with him, he also has a poor sense of aesthetics. Always online. It seemed like I had been fed a mouthful of something and felt a little full. Seppel's was a little strange. He said, oh, drank the last bit of wine in his glass, and then went downstairs to write a letter to the skeleton dance troupe. Tom was sunk deep in the beanbag downstairs. He had just become a physical person and it still felt a little unreal. Many times, you could feel him trying to adapt. The most obvious thing was that he I am used to always falling flat on the ground after walking in the air. Sometimes I subconsciously want to pass through the wall, and then bump into the wall and sit on the ground. It's just pitiful and a bit miserable. But he seemed to be quite enjoying it, so Surpris watched Tom bump and bump again and again, bumping for a long time. From the beginning, he was a little worried, but later he became a happy person, trash, bump, bump. Tom didn't think anything was wrong, so what was he worried about? How's it going? After hearing the voice, Tom propped up half of his body and tried to get up, but he didn't seem to adjust his arms properly. He lost his balance on the beanbag and fell to the carpet. Everything is fine, Sepulus went over and pulled Tom up, watching Tom climb onto the sofa again, I really doubt how you managed to survive the time in the Forbidden Forest. It's hard work to have fun, the Forbidden Forest is actually quite lively. Tom turned over and rolled around on the sofa like a happy salted fish. Worried about Dumbledore's subsequent attention and surveillance, Surples had to wait longer before going to the Forbidden Forest to fish out Tom. Tom actually didn't sleep in the mud. Surprius watched Tom fall and bump everywhere in the past few days, and he was seriously confused. Why didn't he live like a savage in the Forbidden Forest? However, the skeleton dance troupe did a good job, and Surplus felt that the money he spent was quite worth it. Surprius was very satisfied. The invitation to the Knot family was mailed after the performance, along with the new book that Surples bought. Are the letters sent by pure blood families all sent by birds of prey? Surprius looked at the falcon landing on the windowsill of Nurmengard before his eyes, and then at the poor bookstore owl that brought his book. Don't scare other people's owls out. If you scare other people's owls, I might have to pay compensation. The invitation letter was very formal, but not so serious. It was mainly about a casual visit between ordinary friends. Grindelwald did not prevent Sepulus from participating in this kind of friend exchange. On the contrary, he quite encouraged Sepulus to make friends. When he heard that Sepples was going to visit a friend's house, he just asked who was opposite him. I don't need to ask more about what kind of family it is. Friendships in school days are still very important, Grindelwald waved his hand, have fun, son. Surplus. Dad, don't be so enthusiastic. I'm scared of you being so enthusiastic. Why don't you return to the cold persona you had before? However, Grindelwald seemed to feel that a drunken discussion had brought the two of them closer together, and he began to act extraordinarily unbridled in front of Sepulus. It's nothing like having a cold personality. Grindelwald waved his hand, you work hard and try to make all men bow down under your suit pants. Serple's head was full of black lines. No, Dad, do you have any misunderstanding about me? Dad. Grindelwald raised an eyebrow. What misunderstanding? With your small body, you can still be on top. Sepulus turned and ran. It's not impossible at all. Grindelwald was still stroking his chin and thinking after Sepples had disappeared. What if, although it doesn't have to be on top, you can position yourself on top? Quote. But Sepples had already run away, and he refused to hear his father's harsh words. After experiencing the night bus, all Sepulus went out were driven by vans. He was about to go back inside and dial a number to book a ride when Tom patted him on the shoulder. Is there one parked over there? Tom pointed to a low-key and luxurious-looking carriage parked outside the thorn bushes on the border of Nurmengard, I saw someone standing beside the carriage, it was not that classmate of yours. Surprius looked in the direction that Tom was pointing and saw that it was indeed Theodore Knott. Because Nurmengard's magical pressure was still there, strangers without the owner's permission could not enter the area. Surprius hurried downstairs. He doesn't have much luggage. The only important thing is that Tom and Natasha need to take it with them. Everything else doesn't matter. Just buy an exchange.
Maybe that could include Wolf's painting, but that painting is now in the Slytherin common room and he hasn't gotten it back. Theodore. Sir Prius ran down the stairs and waved from a distance to Theodore Knott, who was leaning on the side of the carriage. Sir Prius still has to climb up and down Nurmengard on his own legs, because he is still young and he cannot learn to apparate at the moment. The official apparition can only be learned and verified after reaching adulthood, so Sepulus had to climb up and down the stairs of Nurmengard without complaint. Although he had mentioned to Professor McGonagall a few times that he wanted to understand and participate in the apparition exam, Professor McGonagall was indeed the most serious professor who would never engage in malpractice for personal gain, so she refused quite simply. Sir Prius felt that he could give it a try. After all, he felt that he had mastered the three Ds of apparition, destination, determination and deliberation, and it was not particularly difficult. If that doesn't work, just run around without a certificate. Sir Prius thought angrily as he climbed up and down the stairs. It wasn't until the future that he finally mastered apparition, and then Grindelwald told him that Nurmengard could not apparate, which made him almost angry to death. Good afternoon, Sepulus, Theodore said with a slight smile on his face, I was anxious to see you, so I came here without permission. I hope I'm not much slower than my trust eagle, Sepul said. Ah, I just received the letter, and I was thinking of calling to reserve a carriage, but then I suddenly saw you. Theodore smiled. I'll save you money. Sir Prius had long ago discovered that Theodore would smile more than usual when they were alone. This made him slightly nervous at first, but he soon relaxed. Excellent people should attract more people's attention. Even though I still don't understand what love is, I understand the meaning of appreciation. There is nothing wrong with appreciation. It saves money, saves money, Sepulus followed Theodore's words, it's so considerate. He smiled and blinked. Why did it come suddenly at this time? I thought I would have to wait until later to receive the invitation. I missed you a little, so I came here, Theodore's answer was so frank that Surpris didn't know what to say for a moment. My father is not at home recently. He went to France, talking about business, so there is no one else in Knott's house recently, just the two of us. Quote. Surpolis said, Wow, it sounds like it would be suitable for messing around at home. Nonsense. Theodore looked at Surples, a little curious. Nonsense. Surpris blinked and laughed. When I was still in the orphanage, there was one day at the end of every month when the director and the nuns were away from home. At that time, it was as it's a good time for children like this, they can get together and have fun, as long as they put things away before the adults come back, it's very interesting. Theodore seemed to be interested. So what do you usually play? This stopped Serpolis, and he fell into a certain degree of thinking. Theodore keenly noticed something was wrong. He hesitated and looked at Surprius's thinking side face, aren't you going to participate in their game? It is true to say that Serpils never seemed to mention his friends from the orphanage. Serpils never shied away from mentioning the time he lived in the orphanage, but in his description, he was all about himself, one person. Did the people in the orphanage dislike him? It shouldn't be. Theodore was torn in his heart for a while, and some worries were coming out. Sepulus stuck out his tongue. This is a bit embarrassing to say, I am the one who lets loose in the orphanage, and I usually don't participate in their games. He really had no friends in the orphanage. Although he got along well with everyone in the orphanage, whether it was the foster mother or the orphan circles of the same age, but if he was close enough to be called a friend, it still lacked something. An orphanage cannot raise innocent and ignorant children. Since everyone has their own thoughts and agendas, instead of spending time on them, it would be more enjoyable to spend more time with Natasha. Serples looked at Theodore's expression and knew that Theodore must be thinking too much, but he would not correct Theodore's thoughts. He just smiled brightly, hugged Theodore's arm and took Theodore with him. Otto went to the lounge to sit for a while. Sympathy from others is also a good prop so why should we reject it, Rye? After packing his simple luggage, Sepulus followed Theodore in a carriage to Knott Manor. Compared with the luxury of Malfoy Manor, Knott Manor looks more than a little low-key and luxurious, and it seems particularly gloomy and depressing. This environment doesn't look any better than the orphanage where I live. Sir Prius looked at the gloomy main building of the manor in front of him, which almost exuded a substantial cold air, and then looked at the house elf with a withered face, droopy ears and a lifeless look that greeted them at the door, and said to himself, 
it's not easy for Theodore to grow up so big and not have any inner twists about himself. You can take a brief walk around first, Theodore handed all of Serple's luggage to the house elf, and then smiled softly at Serple's, maybe not manor is not as vast as Malfoy Manor. Luxurious, but still good I think. Sepples raised his hand and slapped Theodore on the shoulder, of course your family is very good. Theodore just smiled slightly, Serpris wanted to joke with him, but he was shocked and speechless when he turned to the main road of the manor and saw a large cluster of red roses that dazzled his eyes. This is, the large swaths of red roses have gathered together like a sea, and the clusters of enthusiasm are incompatible with the gloomy darkness in front of them. The sudden separation has a strange absurdity. It is said that my mother loved roses the most during her lifetime, Theodore followed Seppel's gaze and looked at the dazzling red rose with an indifferent expression. According to my father, she was a passionate woman. Quote. Sepulus turned his head and looked at Theodore. Theodore's expression was indifferent and he didn't seem to be very sad. He just looked at those red and stern roses with a little regret in his tone. She shouldn't have married into the Nada family, Theodore's voice was so calm that Serples could not detect any disturbance. The Nada family trapped her like a spider web. It can't fly either. He really didn't look very sad, just very regretful. Surprius remembered that when they were returning to Hogwarts Castle in a carriage pulled by Thestrals, Theodore once mentioned in Blaze's joke that he had seen the death of his mother. He was so calm and calm that it made people think that he was not that sad about his mother's death. But regarding the Knott family's domestic affairs, Sepples felt that he had better not comment too much and just listen quietly. Sure enough, after this sigh, Theodore did not mention his mother again, but told him that Mr. Knott, his father, was taking care of these flowers, probably out of memory for his mother. Your parents have such a good relationship, Sepulus said with emotion, and then Seppel said with emotion that this is actually quite scary. Maybe, Theodore commented softly, the only people in the entire manor who are still breathing are Surprius, Theodore, and the house elf of unknown age who looks like he is almost dying. There are no troublesome etiquette that need to be followed. He is really doing whatever he wants. Sepulus stayed at home for a few days, but shared a bed with Theodore every night. It's not that the Knott family doesn't have a guest room, it's that Theodore's bedroom has a beautiful starry sky ceiling, which is almost the same as the ceiling in Hogwarts. Theodore told Serples that his home had such a ceiling since he was in the first grade. Now that he finally saw it, Serples couldn't walk when he saw it. On the fourth day of his stay, while Theodore was not in the room for a while, Tom came out of the diary and knocked Surpris on the head. You are in love with your ceiling, and what about me? You just let me live in the diary, and I can't even come out to breathe. Sepulus rolled into the guest room with the diary. How can you blame Sepulus? The ceiling must be so beautiful. Sepulus can do things casually and wander around without restraint, but Theodore cannot. Theodore has an extremely strict schedule. He has to get up early to take a lot of classes every day and work late at night, back to the room. On the first day he arrived at Nod Manor, Sepulus followed Theodore for a day of lessons with a little interest, but then he wasted no time. No, do you have to learn so many things? Serple said he couldn't understand Theodore's class schedule. I understand magic classes, language classes, and etiquette dances, but what the hell are flower arranging and equestrianism? Ah, can you use it? Theodore was very calm, and even took a wooden hammer to help Sepples hit his legs that were so stiff that he couldn't close them because he was riding a horse for the first time. Although it is not useful under normal circumstances, if you learn it, maybe in the future you can use it, we all learn these things, if you don't go to Draco's house during the non-Christmas holidays, Draco won't have time to accompany you. Sepulus was stunned and said to himself, good guy, it's so miserable. It seems that the upper class is not something that a country bumpkin like me can squeeze into. I'd better work hard and strive to be a nouveau riche like the Wolf family. Wolf did not learn so many weird and expensive things, but learned more practical things. It is said that the parties at the Wolf family were just about eating and talking, without any twists and turns. Tom was very interested in the early death of Knott's family, so he could simply return the diary himself, and Surpris simply put the diary and Tom into the Knott family's library. I didn't worry about being discovered at all, I just got into the diary and solved it smoothly. Although this was somewhat rude, Tom was very interested, and Surpris helped him do it. 
After staying here for a while, Mr. Knott finally returned to the manor. As a guest, it was necessary for Sepples to say hello to Mr. Knott and thank him for his hospitality, this was also the etiquette of the nobles. Mr. Knott was obviously stunned when he saw Serples. He hesitated for a long time before walking up to Serples, and turned his body sideways when Serples bowed to avoid being hurt by Serples, of ceremony. What's going on? Serples was confused, Serples was very confused. And in the evening, Tom's eyes were shining brightly as he swept into Serples' room like a gust of wind, and he happily shared what he had discovered today with Serples. I may know why everyone in the Knott family has a short lifespan, Serples. Tom excitedly put his hand on Serples' shoulders, you would never think of it. Serpolis was also quite shocked by this. What, you said you found it? Seppel's eyes widened, the entire magical world has no clue about this, and now you tell me that you have figured it out. What kind of situation is this? Is it possible that Tom still has the ability to be a private detective? Can we then rely on this to make a fortune and get to the top of our lives and acquire Diagon Alley? Can it? Can it? Sepples was shocked. Sepples' eyes widened. I have my advantages, Tom laughed, and used some strength to push Sepulus to lie back on the bed with him. I am a ghost. I can also walk through walls. They can't stop me even if they can't see me. I, I can see things that most people can't. Sepulus was also infected with curiosity, so what did you find? Do you know about the time turner? Tom's eyes lit up. That thing that can go back in time. Serple certainly knew this. At first, he thought about whether he could use this to travel between Hogwarts and Durmstrang, but then Grindelwald told him the time the converter has great limitations, and the maximum look-back time is only five hours, which is not enough for Suprius to go back and forth. Do you know how a time-turner is made? Tom asked another question. Serples couldn't answer this time. He looked at Tom with eyes full of curiosity, how? Tom did not answer directly, but gave it a try. Do you know what department Mr. Knott works in the Ministry of Magic? What department? Serples continued to ask in a dignified manner. He works in the Department of Mysteries. He is a silent man. Tom's eyes sparkled horribly. The descendants of the Knott family are the darlings of time. Sepples opened his mouth slightly, the silent man. The Department of Mysteries is the most mysterious unit in the Ministry of Magic. No one has ever known what the wizards in this department are doing. Their tasks are top secret, and the wizards who work here are called silent people. Wizards usually have an innate magic that exists in a form that is obviously difficult to explain, and even more difficult, arguably impossible, to control. Not is actually one of them. The knots work for the Ministry of Magic, and they manipulate time, Tom shared what he had seen today with Serples. The knots are responsible for making the time turner. Sepples nodded nervously and a little excitedly, is it the price? It's the price, Tom replied affirmatively. The time turner is a prop that plays tricks on time. Even if the Knott family is the darling of time, they cannot fool time for a long time. The price of every time turner is they are all the souls of a Knott family member. Surpriz was stunned. Mrs. Knott. This is the problem I found. Tom's eyes were frighteningly bright. Mrs. Knott, Matilda Knott died while making the time turner. Isn't that right? Theodore said that he witnessed his mother's death with his own eyes. Oh, oh, that's right. Serple suddenly remembered in the middle of his retort that Theodore never seemed to explicitly say that he regarding the cause of his mother's death, he indeed never said that Mrs. Not died in childbirth. I was the one who prejudged it. The witness Theodore mentioned was not that Mrs. Not died in childbirth because she gave birth to him, but that he witnessed his mother passing away while making a time turner and giving up her soul. Then his sigh as he looked at the sky full of roses sounds reasonable. His mother did not originally belong to the Knott family, so a woman who likes red roses must be a bright and passionate woman. If she does not marry into the Knott family, she might be able to have a happy life instead of dying early. She is a flying bird whose wings were broken after being trapped in a spider web by the Knott family. That's why Theodore looked so sorry. This should indeed be a pity. Although everyone in the pure blood nobles keeps talking about serving and dedicating themselves to the family, when the matter of dedication really falls on themselves or their family members, it still makes people feel uncomfortable. Sad, right? And Theodore may not recognize this kind of sacrifice, so he showed so much regret. He regretted his childhood and future life without a mother. 
This idea sounds sad. You should give a symbolic reaction of sadness and sympathy. Sepulus, Tom reached out to pinch Sepulus's cheek, you will make my next story sound very boring. Intellectually, I do sympathize with Mrs. Knott, Surpris patted Tom's squeezing hand, but emotionally I really can't sympathize with her at all. The sequelae of the Horcrux are probably, I just it's not uncomfortable to feel sorry. Tom pinched Sepulus's cheek flesh with a little regret before retracting his hand, the little baby fat on your face has started to fade away, is it going to grow again? After all, time flies by very quickly, and I should have grown taller, Serpulus stretched out his hand to cover his cheek, but did you have baby fat before? Why don't I feel it? Yes, Tom nodded, I always thought it would be soft when I pinched it, but I didn't expect it to be soft when I actually pinched it. Sepples rubbed his face in doubt, but couldn't find anything different from before, so he waved his hand and decided to skip this question, keep talking, keep talking, is there anything else? What I found was a diary. It was in a darkroom in the Knott family library. There was a secret room deeper in the darkroom. It was quite hidden there. If I hadn't been able to walk through the wall, I might not have discovered it at all. Tom still said with great interest, but this is also a reminder to us, it is better not to keep a diary in the future, it is a bit dangerous. Riddle's 16-year-old diary caused an uproar last year, and his 11-year-old diary is now standing here to judge. The judge is that Mr. Knott's diary keeping is a bad habit. A little weird, not sure, take another look. Still weird. What's written in the diary? Asked Serples. The content is remarkable, Tom laughed. Poor Mrs. Knott was sent out as a sacrifice. Sepulous eyes widened. What? A normal time turner can only go back five hours, right? Yes, if you make a normal time converter. The soul of the producer will be trapped in a node of time and space forever and wander into eternity. The kingdom of the living cannot set foot in it, and the world of the dead refuses to accept it. Their souls will wander in eternal time. This sounds terrible, eternal curse or something. Sepulus cautiously retracted his chin. But if there is a member of the Knott family who is willing to burn his soul at the cost, then another person can go back to the past and do something without changing the established reality that has already happened in the future. Tom holding Surprius's hand, what do you think Mrs. Knott's sacrifice brought? Surpris was thinking, and he felt that he had a clue, but the clue was not clear. The ball of wool was tangled and tangled. He turned and turned in the ball of wool, but he could not find the other end of the ball of wool. What's on the other side? What did Mrs. Knott do who burned her soul in sacrifice? What made her pay such a high price? Or why did Mr. Knott give away his beloved wife as a sacrifice? This sounds really ironic and cruel. After all, you can tell at a glance that the roses in the garden are actually well taken care of. There is no way to cultivate them like this without intention. It must be love. But can love be like this? Did Mr. Knott see you today? Seeing Serple's frowning and thinking hard, Tom began to give some hints to Serple's compassionately. I saw him, and I was still surprised. He reacted strangely when he saw me, just, oh. The ball of wool spun and rolled, and the thread with the answer was delivered to Surpris. It has something to do with me and the seven children who were sent out. Mrs. Nod burned her own soul as a sacrifice to leave Voldemort with the tools to make a comeback. Although it is not known exactly how she did it, it was obvious that she succeeded. The fact that Surpolis appears here now is the best proof. Seppel's voice was very low, almost as low as a whisper, so low that it was almost inaudible. Yes, Tom also lowered his tone, the Knott family worked for the Department of Mysteries. They rose to glory with their unique abilities, but also declined because of their abilities. For this reason, the Knott family relied on them early on. After seeing Voldemort back then, the beautiful vision Voldemort gave them was to restore the Knott family. Just because of this, Mr. Knott sacrificed his wife. It's not a sacrifice, it's just that Mrs. Knott has been in poor health after giving birth, and Voldemort made a big deal for the Knott family, she herself was willing, and she even left a letter to Mr. Knott. Tom said I was a little bit sad when I said, she said that her passing can bring prosperity to the Knott family, which is worth it. I hope Mr. Knott can take good care of their children and so on. The letter is in the diary. It looks like it has been turned over frequently, and the edges of the letter paper are frayed. Quote. Sepples also sighed. It's quite miserable. So Mr. 
not as a very persistent Voldemort party. He has paid a huge price. If you can't offer more attractive terms, it will be difficult for the Knott family to do things for you. Even if your classmate and even if you have a good relationship. Tom returned to business after telling the story, do you have any ideas? Serpolis held his forehead with a headache. Why don't you be so enterprising, Tom? Don't let up, my dear, Tom's eyes were bright and full of smiles, I'm still expecting you to become the Dark Lord and then I'll be the second in command. Surprius sighed deeply. I thought I could really have a peaceful and relaxing holiday. It depends on your definition of peace and relaxation, Tom smiled and patted Serpolis on the shoulder, now you don't have to face Dumbledore, I think it is already a lot of peace and relaxation. Isn't it? It's even pleasant. Sepulus snorted from his nose. Or do you want to go back to Nurmengard to see your father? Seriously, don't you think he has a bit of a love brain? I heard him secretly thinking about it after he praised the skeleton dance group. Tom's expression was quite playful. Al now likes thin people. Do I want to lose weight? Their dancing is not as good as mine. Why doesn't Al come and spend Christmas with me? I'll dance for him. Sepulus rushed over and covered Tom's mouth. Okay, okay, don't say any more. Keep a little bit of my father's noble and cool image in my heart. Tom smiled and raised his hands to express surrender. Okay, okay, I won't say anything anymore. But the topic stopped, and the content of the conversation naturally returned to the unfinished matter before. What are you going to do with the Knott family? Tom didn't give Serples the slightest chance to change the subject. Let's look at the situation. It's hard to say now. Serpris said with a slight headache. According to your statement, Mr. Not paid such a heavy price and knew that Voldemort would definitely make a comeback successfully. He would definitely I will still choose to bet on Voldemort. I have no ability to convince him, and if I spare him and let Theodore take power, it will be quite difficult. After a short pause, Sepulus raised a slightly embarrassing possibility, and I feel that Mr. Knott is working very hard for the revival of the family. Once he wants to tie me up with his son and then cares about my surname Grindelwald, it's not good to worry about the rosier family behind me. Tom said, oh, and felt that what Serple said made sense, if it is really difficult to say it this way, then let's leave it for now. Leave it alone, Voldemort can't make a successful comeback without saying a word. It's not certain what will happen in the third grade. Maybe everything will be solved when the time comes. Sepulus was on the bed. It was spread out in big characters, and I always feel worried about Dumbledore. I feel something will happen sooner or later. Yeah, he didn't find time to take care of you this semester. When he has time in the new semester, he doesn't know what surprises he has prepared for you. Tom also lay on the bed, lying flat, his whole body sunk in the softness in the curtain, by the way, Sep, I have something to discuss with you. Tom's words made Sepples feel tight and felt that something was wrong. You, what do you want to discuss with me? His rare voice was a little stuck, and he became more uneasy. I was thinking, since Dumbledore refused to believe you from the beginning to the end, why not just let you be innocent for a semester and become a good person through and through? Tom spoke slowly. He didn't speak directly, but he knew that Serples understood. Surprius understood, but he felt that he must have misunderstood. You want to leave. He heard that his own voice was so dry that it almost didn't sound like it came from him. It's not safe for me to stay in Hogwarts. Now that I am no longer a remnant soul, I will easily be discovered by Dumbledore if I stay with you, causing you trouble. Tom still spoke very slowly analyzing it very methodically, obviously it was not something that just came to mind, but something that had been planned for a long time, and was only mentioned to Sepples after careful consideration. We can think of another way, you don't have to leave, Serples stood up hurriedly to fight for the space with Tom, but Tom had anticipated his move, and when Serples stood up, he at this time, he also turned over, pressed Sepples firmly under his body, and reached out to cover Sepples' mouth. Two pairs of similar black eyes stared at each other, neither of them willing to give in. I have to go, Tom finally couldn't bear to look at the sadness and struggle in Sepples's eyes, and took the lead to look away, I also want to take Natasha away. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.